I'm Howard Gentry Jr. along with Derek Fleming, and Derek, it's another year. Yes, it is. It's football season once again, Howard. Happy to be here. Yes, yeah, definitely football season, and we're here at the John Mary Classic number 21, and this is a big game for both teams as Tennessee State University plays the Mississippi Valley Delta Devils. First time that these two schools have met uh, since 1991, 2001, 2001, and uh, the Tigers won that ball game, but... Uh, when you talk about Tennessee State and Mississippi Valley, you think about Big John Mary, but you also think about a guy named Jerry Rice and Willie Todd. Yeah, don't forget about Archie Glenn uh, who was the, the architect of that, that running gun uh, offense that they had back in the 80s in, uh, in Abila, Mississippi. Mississippi Valley was a force to be reckoned with. It definitely was, and uh, we'll see what kind of force they have this year. They're coming uh, into the stadium under the direction of uh, Vincent uh, Vincent uh, Dancing, and this is his second year. He went uh, old, 1 and 10 last year, but he has so many recruits and so many transfers and so many G junior college players. Matter of fact, over 60% of his team is um, new. Yes, yes uh, Coach Dancing is a guy that would, would graduated from Jackson State, and he's a Mississippi Valley's uh, uh, son who his father went to Mississippi Valley, so he's back home. And so he's talking about changing that program around because he knows what Valley's all about. Well, fans, we'll be back with more pregame on, in just a moment. You're listening to TSU Football on... <laughs> all right, that was... Uh, And fans would like to welcome you back to Nissan Stadium, John Mary Classic 21, as the Tennessee State University Tigers face the Mississippi Valley State Delta Devils, and the kickoff was by Hayden Schuster, and on the return for the Big Blue Tigers to Kendrick Robinson, and uh, the Tigers will take it first down, 10 yards to go at their own 24-yard line. In for quarterback at Tennessee State, uh, Cameron Rosenthal. And up to the right. Hard hit. Wow. Mississippi Valley has come to play on the tackle for Valley. Deion Reed, and boy, he laid the lead on. Yes, he did. I mean, that was one of the emphasis for the Delta Devils is stopping the run game. They really struggled with that last year, and they're coming out with a big play. Two sec two uh, two yard loss for the Tigers. All right, it's going to be second and twelve. There's a handoff left, and uh, boy, Roberson decided he wanted to give a little leather back, and uh, board his way up uh, beyond the original line of scrimmage to the 26-yard line. It's going to be third and nine. Yeah, that play had promise for the Tigers. If uh, to Kendrick Roberson takes a little time and becomes patient, he had a pulling center in Burden who was going to clear the way out, but that's a positive game for the Tigers. Cameron calling the signals. They call him Cam. And uh, finished the year big with the overtime win over UT Martin. Got a man open in the middle, and it closes quick. As that time, Valley did an outstanding job in the coverage. Jonathan Jones and Keontae Daniels both closed in on that ball. Throw a little late. Yeah, that was a bad decision by Cameron on his first pass of the 2019 uh, football season. Uh, he definitely uh, telecast where he was looking to throw that ball to Amalik Moore, and he's lucky not to have that ball intercepted. That's a great start for the Valley defense to get the Tigers off the field with a three and out. Mosley in to punt for the Tigers as the Tigers could not move the ball on the first series. Back to receive is Clayton. 
A long punt. Fair catch call around the 27 yard line. And uh, boy, Mosley has come out booting that football as that was a 46 yard punt. And Mississippi Valley will take it over first and 10. Well, some of the keys to the game for Mississippi Valley State was stopping the run. Well, the first two runs, they only give up a positive two yards. And the other key to the game was be physical. And that first tackle by the Delta Devils was definitely physical. physical. So, so they came from the, the Delta of Mississippi to come and play. And here comes the Mississippi Valley's offense. The Jerry Bryant in a quarterback. And there's a quick pass outside. And it looks like Willie Totten is trying to open the Tigers up right now as he is the offensive coordinator and uh, five yards on the play. Yeah, that's the extension of the run game. Uh, that's basically a long handoff, and they got positive yards, five yards for the Delta Devils. Bad snap and ball short as Tigers put the pressure on. Bryant, no time to do much of anything. It's going to be third and five. Willie Totten, outstanding quarterback, along with Jerry Rice back in the day. He's been on the coaching staff for 20 years. He's offensive coordinator and assistant coach. Held 49 records, NCAA records, uh, as a quarterback at Mississippi Valley. Bryant, back pass. And the ball's in there, and looks like it was caught. And they're going to say that, yes, it is a completed pass. Clayton on the reception, uh, three yards on the play. Well, that's interesting. That's well, a, a lucky break for Valley uh, on that play. Well, uh, they marked him down at the um, <laughs> his first down. First down from Mississippi Valley. Yeah, that I was, thought he was short. Yeah, that was very questionable, um, to say the least. But the same tip pass that that was incomplete for the Tigers ended up being a first down for the Delta Devils. Well, Bryant's trying to uh, get it out there pretty quick. Uh, we were talking to Coach Reed, and Coach Reed was uh, uh, thinking that Bryant didn't have the arm to get those passes out to the sideline, but that's exactly what they're doing right now. Yeah, well, well you know, what they're trying to do is keep uh, that young offensive line from Mississippi Valley uh, with a lot of pressure from the Tigers to get the ball out of his hands quick. And again, uh, Bryant going up top. All righty, and uh, I misspoke, and we were talking about Willie Totten. Willie Totten is the quarterback coach. He's not the offensive coordinator, and Powers is the offensive coordinator for uh, Mississippi Valley. And I want to thank you, for Derek, for opening my eyes up. First game jitters. All right, there's the pass to the big wide out. It's complete, but uh, no yards gained on that play. Maybe one. Johnny Wilson on the reception. He's 6'4", 218 pounds. He's a big guy. Yeah, that's one of those uh, community college kids or JUCO kids that Mississippi Valley went out and got in the offseason. They have over 20 plus players from the JUCO ranks, and uh, he's a big body kid. And uh, lucky for the Tigers, uh, they have a big DB over there by, De by the name of DeJoris Nesbitt, who's about 6'1", uh, who's kind of ha able to handle the size and was able to stop that play pretty quick. Read on the punt and rolling to. <laughs> Boy, he didn't call fair catch on that one. Rolling. And rolling on the return, uh, no yards gained. Fans will be back in a moment. You're listening to OBC Football on ESPN. All right, first down after that 12-yard pickup. Tigers at the 42. And Robinson again and hit in the backfield. And tough play by Mississippi Valley. Nose guard Anton Howard on 
on the stop. A loss of one on the play. And Robeson again, and Valley playing tough. And he slammed to the ground. Big number 99, Jalen Bell. He's 5'11", 280 pounds, and continues to move the Tigers backwards. Yeah, right now, the Mississippi Valley's uh, defensive line has come to play. Uh, they're controlling the line of scrimmage of the Tigers and causing a lot of hesitation in the backfield, which is causing for negative plays in the run game for the TSU Tigers. Rosenthal back pass. And it's complete <coughs> to Roland, about two yards short of the first down. They're going to mark it down at the 49. A pickup of eight yards on the play is going to be fourth down. Yeah, that was an improvi improvised play by Rosendahl. Right now, the Delta Devils defense is not giving the Tigers any room uh, for success right now. Uh, that ball was thrown accurate. It might have been a big play for the Tigers, but nevertheless, uh, it's fourth down. And uh, great job by the Mississippi Valley Delta Devils defense. All right, Mosley is in the punt. His last punt was 46 yards. Jerry's Clayton back to receive. This is a uh, delay of game. All right, Tigers get a five yard penalty for a delay of game. Not sure what caused that delay, but uh, Tigers were just standing around and there was a whistle. Well, if you're a TSU Tiger fan right now, you're, you're scratching your head by how this team has come out in the first six minutes of their 2019 campaign. Uh, there's not a lot of enthusiasm, and the execution has not been there. Uh, this is not something you want to see from a team that has 22 seniors on it. Uh, so we're going to keep our eyes and see what the Tigers can do here. And... Taking the ball at the 24-yard line, fair catching. And neither of these teams have been able to move the ball a lot as Mississippi Valley has through the air on almost every down, trying to break the uh, defense of TSU. Tigers putting pressure on, but uh, nobody really able to move the ball right now. Ball's on the Valley 24. intended for Gray incomplete. Yeah, this is indicative of a, of a, a two teams that hadn't played, e played each other in a, basically 20 years. Uh, it's a, a big feeling out process going on right now with this game and, and uh, there's just not a lot of execution going on on either side. Brian is 3 for 7 for 11 yards in his third series. up up off the right side five yard pickup on the carry for Valley Lewis yeah on that play is one of the key players to the game is young Derek Smith from Greenville Mississippi uh, he got a little crease right there and showed why he's the leading uh, rusher for the Delta Devils hard hit by the Tigers truly not understanding what the, t the, the special teams for the Tigers are doing. Uh, they like rushing the quarter, uh, excuse me, rushing the passer, excuse me, the punter, and 
not giving any help for the return in the backfield. So, and fans will be back after this message. You're looking. Still first down. On the carry for the big blue, Sean McCauley. And it's going to be first down, big blue. Yeah, that was good run from the sophomore out of uh, Chattanooga, McCauley. He made a guy miss in the backfield and kind of made that play himself. Nevertheless, that's a first down for the TSU Tigers. Rosenthal on the keeper, might have picked up a yard on the play. Uh, great coverage by Mississippi Valley as Rosenthal could not find an open receiver and had to uh, pull it down and take it himself. Pick up of one, second down and nine. Yeah, right now Cameron just looks uncomfortable in the pocket and really not reading the field very well. Uh, he's unsettled right now, and he needs to get into some type of rhythm. outside to Roland and he can take it and it's first down as Roland has run out of bounds around the 38 yard line first down for the big blue and Roland finally has been able to get his hands on the ball and make something happen yeah right there when you when your guy is is a little uncomfortable um, you got to just get the ball out of his hand quick because uh, you got some playmakers out there like Roland who can make you look good real quick. Pass out to Roland again. He's got the sideline. And Roland out of bounds at the 33-yard line. And it's going to be another first down for the Big Blue. Yeah, once again, you just get the ball to your playmaker and let him make a play. Uh, the Tigers offense is now getting some type of rhythm and uh, now deep into Mississippi Valley territory. Rosenthal back to pass and again complete to Roland and he's close to the first down flag on the play a very late flag and we'll have to see what the call is yeah by the looks of thing the Mississippi Valley coaching staff is clapping their hands like they saw some type of play or some type of flag on the Tigers so uh, this ineligible receiver called against Tennessee State. Uh, one of the linemen got down the field before that pass got out of the hands of Rosenthal. So the Tigers will come back five yards. And it's going to be first down 15. Uh, yep, that's what uh, the, the seems like the coaches of uh, Mississippi Valley called that one. <laughs> <laughs> they were caught before the flag was out. <laughs> All right, ball back on the Valley 37. Just a great play by number 40, Mississippi Valley, Ray Taylor, 6'2", 265, out of Memphis, Tennessee, and uh, made that stop in the backfield, and the Tigers again struggling both 
on the ground and in the air, minus the few passes to Rolda. Ball back on the 38-yard line. Second down. And, oh, boy, almost a catch by Tennessee State University's Malik Abdul-Hawk. Was not able to hold on to that ball, but Rosenthal did a great job of getting an uphill. Just couldn't hold on. It would have been a tough catch had he caught it. Yeah, that's uh, the secret weapon for the Tigers. He's a 6'7 wide receiver out of the West Coast, California. Uh, and he had a chance. He had a, a step in front of the defender. Yes, he did. He had both hands on the ball. Yeah, it's hard to overthrow 6'7, but, but <laughs> nevertheless, Cameron did. He wish he had that one back. Big third down play for the Big Blue. Rosenthal back to pass. And the ball was dropped as Sean McCauley had the ball and had blockers in front of him. Rosenthal tried to screen fat pass at first, but the rush was a little too hard. He bellied back a little bit and let it go, and McCauley just dropped the ball. Well, it was also not an executed play. Where, I mean, you never want your quarterback to throw back to the middle of the field, so he was lucky doing that. Nevertheless, he should have caught the ball, but I'm pretty sure that's not how that play design was supposed to be. <laughs> All right, Mosley in the punt. Back to receive the punt. Is Clinton. And flag on the play. That's the second punt where Tennessee State University has been penalized. Yeah. Well, that's the second penalty on the punt team, uh, which is a rare feat in football. So obviously the Tigers are just totally out of sync right now. Fourth down and a flag on the play. Ball start on the Tigers, which is going to move the ball back another five yards. And fans, we'd like to apologize for the technical difficulties that we're experiencing right now. Hopefully, we'll be able to get uh, this straight and be able to uh, broadcast more clearly. Well, one thing now, uh, unfortunately, Howard, I'm about to pull out my penalty counter because the Tigers are starting to count it up already. I believe that's the fifth penalty for the TSU Tigers. And, and it's the fourth on the punting team in the last two punts. High punt coming down around the 13-yard line, and Mississippi Valley will take it first down and 10 from there. Well, right now, we got two teams that are struggling. Uh, they're trying to find some type of rhythm on offense. Second down, three yards to go for Mississippi Valley. Yeah, that's uh, that play right there was an RPO, which the Tigers were really trying to prepare for with the, the dazzling quarterback, the Jared Bryant. He uh, had the, probably the biggest play of the day so far for the Valley offense with eight yards on that run, and then they come right back with another RPO with a short game, so now it's third and one for the Delta Devils. Well, Bryant was actually the leading rusher for Mississippi Valley last year out of the quarterback position. Third down a yard. There's Bryant on the keeper, and he's hit hard at the line of scrimmage, and it looks like he might not have made it. Yeah, that's the sensational sophomore from Cane Ridge, Tennessee. 
Jayshon Bryant with his first start at middle linebacker let his presence felt. He was the one of those guys that were very confident coming into this game, and he shows you why. What a play by the sophomore, fourth down for the Delta Devils. Well, I'll tell you what, this might be the spark the Tigers need to get some uh, offense going as Chris Rowland has really been the only highlight for this team in the first quarter. Schuster back to punt. It's going to be a low spiral. He's going to give Roland a chance, and he's going to take advantage of it. And it's Roland at the 30, 25, run out of bounds <coughs> around the 20-yard line. And, buddy, Roland has the Tigers rolling. Well, he's your senior captain. He's the senior leader of this team. And uh, we just talked about the last two punts. The Tigers kind of gave a passive rush towards the punter. They didn't give him any help. That time they called a return, and they gave him just an inch, and he almost took a mile. That's uh, the best play of the day for the Tigers offense. Let's see what they can do with it. All right, quarterback into the game. Cam Rosenthal in great field position, ball to 25. And the end of the round, Stephen Newbold trying to get Newbold into the mix. But uh, that's the second time that Valley has sniffed that one out. Pickup of two yards on the play. It's going to be second and eight. Yeah, Valley runs that type of offense, so they're, they're well prepared for that type of edge rushing that the Tigers are trying to do uh, with wide receivers and jet sweeps. So the Tigers are going to have to figure out a way to get Mississippi Valley out of that front because they see that every day in practice, and they're not having much success with it. Pass Newbold and still on his feet. Boy, he had a juggling act there, but not before he picked up the first down. Ball marked down at the eight-yard line. Great concentration by Newbold on his first reception of the day. Well, that's why the offensive coordinator, Bo Shannon Harris, wanted to try to establish that run game so he could then start having some play action and help the inexperienced quarterback Rosendahl ease into the game and that's why that's a wonderful pitch and catch for the two seniors that's first and goal for the Tigers 14 yards on the pass play Rosenthal on the keeper and it's touchdown Tennessee State University Rosenthal on the keeper eight yards camp and the Tigers have Struck goal. Well, that's why it's so important. A lot of people thought that Cameron Rosendahl was such a traditional drop back passer. Well, that time he pulled it, fooled the whole Delta Devil defense, and came around the edge with a good block by the senior Newbold for a walk down. First points for the Tigers in 2019. All right, Tennessee State University on the board. to attempt the point after Vita holding Chris kick is up and the kick is good so that's the end of the first quarter fans as Tennessee State University goes up by a score of seven to nothing. You're listening to OVC football. And we're back at the John Mary Classic number 21 as the Tigers have taken a seven to nothing lead at the end of the first quarter. And it looked like they started clicking after getting great field position and uh, moving the football. Well, what happened is the senior stepped up and said, look, we're tired of playing like this. And particularly like uh, Chris Rowland basically has taken over the game. Uh, with several catches, a big punt return, and he was key to that field position for the Tigers to get their first points on the board. So let's see what the seniors do now and try to keep the, get this team motiv motivated and get some flow here for the 2019 season. All right, that was Clayton on the return and uh, they're going to mark it for motion around the 14-yard line. Special teams have picked it up, and the 
Starting to look like old Mississippi Valley football. <laughs> yep. I was sitting here thinking the same thing, Howard. I said, wow. That's and awesome. there's the official stopping play. Uh, this play even has Mississippi Valley food. Yeah, they look like they had a con little confusion going on. And they called a timeout to keep a bad play from getting better. So uh, that's the first timeout for the Delta Devils. Uh, but it looked like it had some Archie Gunslinger Cooley over the helm to the Choo Choo train uh, lined up to the wide side of the field. And uh, unfortunately, they Gang tackling on the outside, both left and right. And Tennessee State is starting to toughen up defensively, and Valley struggling, trying to move the ball, both on the ground and in the air. Well, what Valley's trying to do is kind of make this game a, a dog fight, right? They're not trying to hit any explosive plays right now. They're trying to maintain and stay close because they don't want the Tigers to get any type of momentum where they have to fall behind and have to throw the ball a lot. So this is the game plan for the Delta Devils to make it a a methodical game. And Jarek Bryant on the pass, overthrown, and it's going to be fourth down. Well, th this has been the best play for the Tigers so far is a kick, uh, a Chris Rowland punt return. Let's see if the Tigers try to go after this one or once again set up a return because right now Chris Rowland is the MVP <laughs> of, of the offense. <laughs> Hayden Schuster in the punt standing back around the two-yard line. Tigers have a return on, very returnable. Going to take it at the 40-yard line and run out of bounds around the 42. So it's the rolling show right now. Well, when his brother gets into the backfield himself, <laughs> it's really a rolling show. <laughs> They're both seniors on the team. And that was Seth running off the field with him <laughs> as he was playing on the special team. He's also a running back for the Big Blue. All right, Tigers will have it first and 10 on their own 43-yard line, leading 7 to nothing. Quarterback Cameron Rosenthal. to the big guy, DeMarco Corbin. Corbin, uh, the leading scorer out of the backfield from last year, picks up a yard on the play. He's a load. Yeah, but once again, the Delta Devils run defense has been phenomenal. That's something that they worked hard in, uh, in the camp and over the offseason to, to, uh, to fix that because they were one of the worst teams in the swag last year in the run. And that pass to Chris Rowland, and he's going to be brought down. They're going to move it back to the 49-yard line, pick up a five yards on the play. Third and five for the Big Blue. 
Yeah, this is a big down for the Tigers. And still, Cameron Rosendahl doesn't look no, look like he's comfortable with what he's seeing. Once again, that was another improvi improvised play where he kind of rolled around and just found the guy open. Look like he's not seeing the defense very well. Rosenthal on the keeper. He's got a first down and more as he crosses the 45. Mark down at the 43-yard line. It's going to be first down, Big Blue. Yeah, well, that time Cameron called his own number and ran a quarterback draw. Uh, when now people are just uh, not believing that Rosendahl wants to run the football, but he's pretty athletic. And uh, his legs are right now are, are keeping the Tigers up, up, up in the game. Eight yards on the play, first and 10 for the Big Blue. Looking upfield, and he's got pressure on him. And there was a receiver in the area. <laughs> Had his back turned, but that's okay. He was in the area. Uh, Miles Cabot was close to the ball, close enough to keep uh, the flag in the pocket. Well, it it's all for not, Howard. The Delta Devils, a flag for a hand to the face. And when you're an underdog team like Mississippi Valley was coming into this game, you can't have those type of penalties. And uh, that negates a, a negative play uh, for the Tigers and puts them 15 yards down the field and an automatic first down. It is going to be a big penalty against Mississippi Valley. The ball now on the Valley 28-yard line. Cameron Rosenthal, the guy that is coach calls him the quarterback uh, he is there's no uh, question about who the quarterback is the starting quarterback for this team this year Corbin on the carry uh, 230 pounds he bulls his way up to close to, to the 25 yard line they're going to mark him down at the 26 pick up a two yards on the play yeah both Tiger running backs right now are not being patient and allowing the blocks to develop. Once again, he had two guys in front, two offensive linemen pulling that were trying to do, do, do kick out blocks for him, and he just ran right by him. So, and he's off across the 15, down to the 10. Roberson on the carry, and boy, he burst through that line all the way down to the 10 yard line, 16 yards on the carry. First down, Big Blue. Yeah, that's the best run for Tekedrick to today. And, and he gives back five. And he follows back up with a negative <laughs> run play. So right now, the offense is just not uh, in rhythm right now. The offensive line is truly struggling with the Delta Devils. Uh, by, by most parts, the Delta Devils' uh, run defense has been solid. So the Tigers need to figure out a combination to try to get some consistency on the ground. Great play by the Delta Devils. Well, you got to give Jalen Bell, well, Malice Carey, and also Jerry Gardner credit for playing tough up front because they are handling Genesee State's offensive line. Ball back to the 14-yard line. Collie on the carry. And he's going to get it back to the nine yard line. Big third down play for the Tigers. Third and goal. Yeah, last year for the Tigers inside the 10 yard line, they were atrocious. They made a lot of in interceptions and bad plays. So it's interesting to see what they'll do here on this third third and goal from the 10. Rosenthal back to pass, throws to the end zone. And touchdown, Tennessee State, but there's a flag on the play. And it's around the line of scrimmage, holding, called against the Big Blue. So that touchdown will come back. And Tennessee State's going to have to try it again. Well, uh, you know I have my penalty counter out, Howard. <laughs> and I believe that's number six for the Tigers, and that's something they cannot have uh, this year if they want to be successful and win the championship. Just too many penalties last year, and, and just if, if I count right, six already. 
I mean, that's on pace. Well, they had four for 20 yards in the first quarter. Okay. So, so, so with six minutes. 506. Yeah. yeah. So that's too many penalties. In some games, the teams only have four or five penalties the whole game. So All right. They, they got to clean it up. Yep, they do. Third down and goal. Ball back to the 19-yard line. Wyatt outs either side. Good blocking. Ball thrown to the middle. Nobody open down the middle. Ball intended for Steven Nubo, but he was double covered and didn't have a chance. Yeah, well, that's one time the Tigers shot themselves in the foot. They had a big play to get inside the 10-yard line. The next play, they lost four or five yards on a run play, uh, then a penalty, and next thing you know, you have a, what's that, 30, 30, Yard field goal? Well, it's going to be a 29 yard okay. field goal attempt. But you start he's, th he's 35 yards back, but yeah, from the line of scrimmage. Okay. 29 yard field goal attempt. Straight down the middle, kick is up. And the kick is good. So, kick is no good. No good. I sure thought I saw two hands go up. Yeah, the guy on one side didn't, okay. give, a, give, a, didn't give a signal. The other guy gave a no, no good signal. All right, so Zeta misses his first field goal of the season. His first field goal attempt, which is totally different from how he started last year. He started five of five. Well, as you see, if we're looking at the Delta Devil sideline, they're feeling good about themselves. Oh, yeah. You know, they were one in 10 team. They didn't compete very well. They're, they're here to compete, and they're in this ball game. And as long as the Tigers play like this, they have a good shot at it. Derek back to pass. Pass is complete and close to a first down. On the reception, great. 6'2", 225 pound receiver. Pick up of eight yards, second and two. Well, that's been the best play for the Delta Devils is that little hitch, that little out route, something getting the ball out the uh, quarterback hands quick. And you knew that this would be next, would be a shot down the field. Unfortunately for the Delta Devils, that ball was thrown behind the intended receiver, Gray. Nesbu was beat inside on that play. He did leap and get his hands on the ball, but uh, perfect pass, he'd still be running to the end zone. You just had to know it was coming. Third down and two. Flag on the play. Boy, Nesbitt got caught on that inside cut. Yeah, well, it's a real skinny post that the receiver ran. He took a gamble to cut it off because the ball was behind him. But if that ball has a little more air and it's thrown out in front, Nesbitt is going to have difficulty getting his hands on that ball. Nesbitt, uh, preseason, all OVC. Top defender for TSU last year, all OVC. All right, that's going to move the ball back to the 23. Derek back to pass, screen play, ooh. And the Tigers come up with a big play as Devon Bryant snipped that one out and put the leather on. Yeah, see, that's what happens when they got all these double numbers. That's Terry Strader uh, on that play as linebacker. But, Howie, that's not your fault. That is. They got two 18s that's right. on this roster. Uh, but that's uh, the middle of the Sam Backer from uh, Miami, Florida, on that on a great play to stop that screen play. That's right. Just got here, didn't he? Yeah. Because Bryant's quarterback. Yeah, Bryant's <laughs> a quarterback. <laughs> All right. Slaughter into Schuster into uh, punt. And the Tigers will take it over first and 10. After we take this break, you're listening to OBC Football on ESPN. Fans, we would like to welcome you back to Tennessee State University football. Rosenthal back to pass, held that ball too long. 
And a big, big loss for the Big Blue. Yeah, right there. I uh, don't know what Cameron was looking at. The intended receiver was wide open, and he just couldn't open up his shoulders and get the ball out. Just took a negative play there. He has to throw that ball away. Uh, that's not a smart decision from a senior. Good play by the Delta Devils. Boy, a loss of 11 yards. And the Tigers all the way back to the 35-yard line. Rosenthal with the keeper and another flag on the play. See what we have here. And it looked like it's against the Tigers because they're talking to the Delta Devils coaching staff to see if they would like to take the penalty. So I have my penalty counter out again. Third down, big blue as the Delta Devils have declined the penalty. Tigers with a third down, 20 yards to go for the first down. And so they chose to take a down from TSU rather than the penalty. Smart move. Rosenthal back to pass, rushes on, and the ball's on the ground. Picked up by Tiger, now picked up by Mississippi Valley. And it's touchdown, Mississippi Valley. As Tennessee State University turns it over. Well, that right there is unexcusable for the Tigers. First of all, the play was a screen play, and it was one guy out there, and they had three linemen, and the guy missed the block. Okay, that was made to play break down. But then the center picks the ball up and tries to run with it, and he fumbles it, <laughs> which was Thomas Burton, who knows he's a senior. He has to just pounce on that ball and not let something like that happen. So nevertheless, the Delta Devils have struck in 2019 for a touchdown. We got a ball game, Howard. And Keontae Daniels took that ball into the end zone. A very heady play by Daniels. And now Mississippi Valley attempting to get proper personnel into the ball game. And if I'm if I'm if if I'm Coach Reed, I may challenge this. I don't think he he might have a an argument there that the kid Robeson never had full control of that ball. So this could work out as a break for the Tigers, but it's a big break for the Delta <laughs> Devils right now. So if he didn't have full control, of course, that would be an incomplete pass. And the Tigers would be punting. Nevertheless, that's just a negative drive. They had negative plays, uh, missed open receivers, and once again, there's the play. And we had a, a guy picks the ball up and tries to run with it. <laughs> That's the center. And uh, he knows better than that. He knows better than that. There's nothing good can come from that. All right. So as the officials look at the replay, we're also looking at it. And it is a possibility that Roberson didn't have possession of that ball long enough. On the replay, it, uh, it's a close call. But it's certainly in the hands of, uh, matter of fact, Coach Reed is actually sending his offense onto the field. Well, he should be sending his punt team on the field. Right, right, he is. Uh, uh, Moses <laughs> on the field. <laughs> With a, yeah. a negative 12 play drive, a negative 12 yard drive, uh, that just not right there. That offense is just not clicking, Howard. Um, no, it's the first game, but they were expecting a little bit more dynamic offense. That's why Shannon was he brought here, right? That's right. It was. He uh, wanted more pop. And uh, and that is what Coach Reed is expecting. And even Mississippi Valley is putting their receiving team, return team on the field, even though the officials have not given the final indication. But uh, based on what we have seen, it appears that uh, Everybody thinks that that ball was incomplete.
and we still got the white hat on the field. Yep. Well, the Tigers right now are 0 for 2 on screen plays, and uh, both of them were both disasters. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, Cameron threw one back behind him towards the middle of the field. Uh, McCauley dropped it. Um, but you never can do that as a quarterback, right? Now, he's in his second start, but he's a mature guy. You know, Cameron is a mature guy. It's his fifth or sixth year out of uh, high school ball, so he has to know better than some of the things that he's ex dis displaying right now. That's true. And they must have already made the decision because um, the officials are lined up for the punt situation, and I guess um, we will be seeing Mosley Punting the ball. Well, it's real odd, though. I mean, both teams have just made the decisions that, and the the, you know, the, the white cap is still he's <laughs> got a headset on. So, well, well, uh, <laughs> even the other officials are lined up for uh, the punt. So, I, I have to think it's a clock situation. Yeah. You know, it, when it you, when, yeah, you're, you're trying to get that clock time put back on on the extra after at the, the actual That's play of the run back of the fumble, right? So if there's no pass, then there's no fumble. So all that time has to go back, and that's probably what he's trying to figure out right that now. That is, that is. And uh, if that's not what it is, we're going to, we're going to uh, at least accept that. Players are down on one knee now. We're here at the John Merrick Classic, John Merrick Classic 21. Tennessee State and Mississippi Valley have not met in over 20 years, and uh, this is their first meeting. Right now the score is Tennessee State 7, Mississippi Valley 6, and uh, once the officials get through conferring, I have a feeling that 6 is going to come off the board and the Tigers are going to be punting. Um, you know, this is totally different then the matchups when Tennessee State was playing against Jerry Rice and Willie Totten and it was a shootout. Yep. It yep. was a shootout up and down the field. Tennessee State, touchdown. Mississippi Valley, touchdown. And the last man scoring was a win in the ball game. Uh, well, well, actually, that game you're speaking about, that was in 82. I 82. was at that game. I was five years old. <laughs> uh, the, and the TSU Tigers were able to escape the Delta with a score of 63 to 41. And that was the early stages of the, the Willie Satellite Titan and the Rice uh, combination. But that next year, the Delta Devils got the revenge. So, okay, so they've just given the signal that it's an incomplete pass, so Tennessee State will be punting the ball. They're resetting the clock now, and it uh, took a little while, but they figured it out. Yeah, it looked like, you know, it was a bang-bang play, and once that, re that replay came across the, the, the jumbotron, it was pretty clear that Tekedrick never had control of that ball. Um, so it's unfortunate for the Delta Devils, and Coach Dancy is really pleading his case because he knows he's in this football game. His he team is. is playing. He has a young team, and not necessarily by age, but they have 46 new players on this team, and they're trying to bond, and they're getting some success here. And, you know, that right there really would have made a big difference for them. And what a kick a by Mosley. A booming kick by Mosley that's going to go into the end zone. My goodness. It's going to be first and 10 for the Delta Devils from the 20 yard line, and Mosley gave no chance for a return. Well, Mosley is a sophomore uh, who regained, uh, who gained uh, the kicking duties last year as a true freshman, and in camp he was booming them like that, you know, pretty, pretty often. And and so when you see him get a hold of one like that, it's not really a surprise. But I did look at and see if the flags were were helping <laughs> and. Uh, now, that was a straight kick by him, an uh, awesome kick for the sophomore. The Delta Devils get the touchback and uh, get bring their, their offense back on the field. All right, it's going to be first and 10 for the Delta Devils. Pass outside, and it's complete. Close to a first down. Yep, yeah, that's, uh, that's smart by 
by the Delta Devils to try to get the Jarek out of the uh, out of the out of the pocket and roll away from the Tigers' pressure. Uh, that's a great looking play, positive play, and gives them a second and short. Wilson on the uh, catch, then we'll move it back uh, as a seven yard gain, and the Tigers stack the Delta Devils up at the line of scrimmage. No gain. Well, that's becoming a common theme for both offenses. One good play, one bad play. <laughs> so, you know, they get eight yards on first down, and then they lose a yard on second down. Still third and short, but, you know, both offenses are doing some things to hurt themselves. All right, third down and three. Bryant looks upfield. He's got a man open. It's a jump ball, and... Almost intercepted by Ronnie Killens, and everybody's ooing and on, but they have to understand that that ball was tipped by the receiver, and so it wasn't just an easy ball for Killens to intercept. Yeah, that was uh, a, a, a play where he gave his receiver a chance, um, you know, He's six five, so you just get some time. You let you know do a jump ball. Uh, nevertheless, the receiver stopped running and uh, gave the Tigers an opportunity to intercept it, but they didn't execute as well. So both teams right now are struggling on offense. Schuster on the punt, and there he goes. Still on his feet, is rolling. Finally brought down at around the 49-yard line. Roland is just an exciting guy. Yep, well, he came into uh, his freshman year as a return specialist and became a all-OVC performer on special teams, and now he's a senior. He's doing the exact same thing. Uh, so uh, he's starting up this senior season well. All right, it's going to be first and 10 for the Big Blue Tigers from their own 49-yard line. As there's timeout on the field, and we're going to stay right here with you as Tennessee State University leading 7 to nothing. It hasn't been a... Uh, the best game for either team, but Tennessee State has been able to, or was able to take advantage of a miscue by Mississippi Valley, get the ball in excellent field position, and Rosenthal took it in for an eight yard touchdown for the Big Blue, but not a lot going on outside of that, except for Roland. Yeah, well, you look at the stats right now, Mississippi Valley has one first down, uh, the Tigers have eight. Uh, total yards, the Tigers have 100, 103 yards of total offense, and the Delta Devils have 41. And so, yeah, right now both offenses are struggling. Uh, but it's even a little bit, it's probably more disappointing for the Tigers because the, the Tigers were coming to this game a 31 and a half point favorite. So when you have that type of odd, you know, you're supposed to kind of come out and handle this team. Uh, the only o other OVC opponent that Mississippi Valley has played is Jacksonville State, and they didn't have much success. So, nevertheless, that's the reason why uh, you thought that the Tigers would come out. Fans, we're back as Tennessee State University leading 7-0. Rosenthal back to pass is complete. And it's a first down for the Big Blue. Number 84, Malik Abdul-Hak on yeah. the reception. Yeah, both teams now are, are trying to get their quarterbacks out of their pocket because of the pressure, and that's a first down throw for the Tigers. It was a high pass to Roland, came down in his knee, so they're going to mark him down right at the line of scrimmage. Might have lost about a half a yard on the play. Yeah, one of the things I'm watching with Cameron, if he throws the ball to the right side of the field, he's pretty accurate, but when he throws to the other side, it's just a little inaccuracy there, and, and once again, he throws a high ball to the left side, 
and uh, that's an easy pitch and catch, and uh, he misses it. So he still hasn't gotten to a rhythm at, at quarterback. Great pressure by Cooper on Rosenthal. He had to rush it, and the pass is incomplete. Yeah, the Tigers had that perfect play for that uh, outside corner, uh, outside pressure blitz, but Cameron just couldn't connect with uh, the tight end out of the backfield, so it's third and long for the Tigers. Third and 11 for the Big Blue. Pass to the sideline, and it's incomplete. Newbold couldn't hold on to the football, thought he had held it long enough, but... Uh, it's an incomplete pass, so the Tigers will be punting as they came up empty on that series of downs. Yeah, well, yeah, both offenses are trying to find some rhythm here, and uh, it's pretty tough for both. It's not a pretty game, and when you're um, a 30-plus point team, Mosley looked like he was going to fake that uh, punt. Then he decided to kick it and really didn't come up with too much um, help there as the ball goes through the end zone. And it's going to be first and 10 for the Delta Devils from that point. Yeah, if you're the Delta Devils right now, you are ecstatic about what's going on in this game. Uh, you got a bunch of new players, 40-plus new players. Uh, you guys work hard in camp. Coach Dancy is in his second year at the helm. He came back and brought in Willie Satellite Totten to be assistant head coach and quarterback coach, who's a legend. And this team is well coached and well prepared. And you can tell they're getting some confidence here as the TSU Tigers struggle uh, to get anything uh, going with any consistency. So this is going to be an interesting game here to see what, how it turns out. Both teams can get some kind of rhythm and take control. Pass is <laughs> complete. That was an uh, interesting play there. It looked like uh, the intended or the receiver was on the ground and still caught the ball. Gray was the receiver. One yard on the play. It's going to be second and nine. Yeah, that wasn't a smooth one, Howard. <laughs> well, Gray was sitting on the ground, and Bryant sent a zinger out to him. He was able to pull it in. Hand off to the left side. Dwayne Barnett on the carry, picked up a couple yards. As the Delta Devils called timeout. 2.57 remaining. And we're gonna stay right here with you as both bands are here. Oh my God. Hey, you had called me. Look, man. Look. Huh?
Third down, eight yards to go. Brian in the shotgun, wide outs both sides. Brian looking upfield, and just a bad pass. Had DeAndre White, the tight end, open, but just couldn't hit him. And it's going to be fourth down for the Delta Devils. You know, what's, what's apparently clear that it, both teams are both Offensive coordinators don't trust their offensive lines because they both teams are exclusively going to rollouts to try to, uh, to get their quarterbacks out of the pressure. And that's what's causing a lot of inaccuracies with both quarterbacks. Uh, they just don't have time and they're on the run trying to throw the ball. Uh, and somebody's going to have to get their offensive line in order to try to get some consistency at quarterback position. A high snap. And Roland is going to handle it back around the 36-yard line. We need to get the stat and see how many punts that is. <laughs> I mean, that's at least five, right? It's got to be five punts. How well, many punts? A you lot see? of punts. It's a lot of punts. <laughs> a lot of punts. The punter is going to get his money worth tonight. In, uh, the in the first quarter, there were three punts on both sides. Okay. And so, uh, of course, that number has increased dramatically in the second quarter. Just that's a hard flow to the game right now. Both teams are still trying to feel, them, feel their way uh, to some, some type of rhythm. All right, the Tigers first and 10. There's a pass to Roland, and he's still on his feet, and it's Roland out of bounds at the 36 yard line. I don't know how it's a flag behind the play that came in late. And uh, this better not be anything after a play with one of the Tigers because that's just not a good look right there. Well, it looks like they're coming back. <laughs> 77, unnecessarily roughness. Yeah, that's get Jalen Gupton. Jalen Gupton, the, uh, the freshman offensive tackle. Yeah, he's a true freshman out of Nashville Stratford who's starting at left tackle. Uh, that's just a bonehead mistake right there with a positive play. You shoot yourself in the foot, and you go back six yards. Or well, he's a tough kid, but uh, probably being a little too tough on that one. Ball back to the 32-yard line. Fumble on the play, and it's going to be touchdown, Mississippi Valley. I'm trying to see a number here. It looks uh, like it looks number like, six. It looks like number six, and is that the same young man that, yep, Keontae Daniels is the same young man that picked the other one up and went into the end zone. Yeah, well, he is a, he's a ball hawk, and uh, he's always around, and that's a strong safety. Keontae Daniels with his first touchdown of the season officially, but he's been in the end zone earlier already with one play that was called back. So nevertheless, this Delta Devil defense is, is really showing out. Uh, they are controlling the line of scrimmage. They're not letting the Tigers run the football, and they have just tied this game, or... Well, well, extra six point points. Away. There's an injured <laughs> Tiger on the field. Not sure what the number is. At least he's sitting up now, so that's a good sign. But looks like 72. Will James. Will James. And he's coming off under his own power, so that's a good look. In to attempt the uh, point after. It's number 47, Hayden Schuster. Looks like it was some movement on both sides. It's going to be interesting. Are they going to call a false start? All right, false start's going to move it back five yards. Penalties adding up on both sides of the ball. For Howard. 
the Tigers going to have to go in at halftime and go to, go to the drawing board, <laughs> and if the decision is going to be simple. And who do you want running your offense? Because right now, this offense is being ran the same way that UT Martin came <laughs> last year, and, but they got away with that one, <laughs> you know. <laughs> they, they, they got a decision to make at halftime. And what he's saying is there is another quarterback. <laughs> several. several. There are several other quarterbacks, and uh, um, is this the quarterback that's going to finish the game out? We'll have to see. Well, you just give yourself options, you know? You just got to see what other guys can do as well. And that's and blocked. the kick is blocked, and it's going to be recovered, and the Tigers stay ahead by one, so... With that block kick, Tennessee State still leads in this ball game. And I can't see the hand that got up. It, it looked like it. There was a lot of penetration. There was a there. lot of penetration. It looked like it could have been Ray Coggins, but uh, not sure. But anyway, uh, with two minutes, 17 seconds remaining in this first half, Tennessee State holds on to a one-point lead. Yep, well, two minutes left. That's going to be a decision now. Uh, if I'm Mississippi Valley, I'm not kicking the ball to, to Chris Rowe. Okay. You know, it's just a matter <laughs> of time before rolling breaks. I up. mean, it's just a matter of time. I mean, yeah. I, I'm, I'm even thinking about since I have momentum here, my defense is playing lights out, just kick it out of bounds and, and give it to them on the 35-yard line because the offense of the Tigers are, is just out of sync. So the only positive play they got right now is from Chris Rowland. I'm not kicking him that ball. Well, he has been the only positive. Tennessee State only has 125 yards in total offense yeah. in this first half. And we said Chris Rowland has, what, 75% of it? Most of it. <laughs> and so you were talking about penalties. The Tigers have been penalized six times now for 45 yards. And it's just not a good first half. There's a kickoff, and it's not going to Rowland. And smartly... It took True Hart a few seconds, but he finally decided to put the knee down. But he had the knee down. That wasn't True Hart, was it? Yeah, that's McCauley. That? Yeah, that was McCauley. He had the knee down when he held the ball, so. And uh, gave a was, fair catch. Yeah. So <laughs> he was making sure he, he wasn't going to get any fair. contact, yeah. <laughs> which is smart. All right, ball in the 31 yard line, Tennessee State in pretty good field position. Two minutes, 17 seconds remaining in this first half. Slim lead. Tigers would like to go into the dressing room with a little more cushion. Now, I've never seen this before. The Tigers came out on the field with no center. They didn't have a center. Luckily, Cooley just came out. <laughs> well, let's hope that Burton's not hurt. His pass to the sideline, new bowl. It's going to be close to first down. We'll have to see where the mark is. And they're going to rule it first down for the Tennessee State Tigers, 10 yards on the play. Well, Burden is standing on the sideline. So I don't know. Good defensive play effort by the Delta Devils on the tackle, Eric Powell. Well, the, the and now... No, Burton's still on the yeah, sideline. I'm, I'm looking at Burton. Burton's yeah. standing on the sideline. He's, he's had injuries the last couple of years. Let's hope he's not hurt. Rosenthal back to pass. He's got all day. It's complete to Nubo. Still on his feet. Down to the 40-yard line. Marked down at that point. Pickup of 19 yards on the play. Yeah, well, that's the thing there that the Tigers are now trying to do a little hurry up, and sometimes the game gets a little easier for a quarterback to read once he's in two minutes. In the two minute, uh, the two minute drill. Well, that's a false start on Chris Rowland. That's penalty number seven. That's going to move the Tigers back five yards. They were on a roll. Tigers back on their Mississippi Valley 45 yard line.
Quick pass over to Roland and knocked down. Good defensive play by Mississippi Valley. On the tackle number 44, Allen Hamilton, Adam Hamilton. Yeah, the Delta Devils defense has just been stingy. Uh, when it's only a couple of big plays they've given up, but by most part, they've been solid. Coach Dancy just has to be excited about what the Delta Devils have this year. That was just a bad pass by Rosenthal. Nubo was open along the sideline, but thrown behind him. Clock under a minute now, 50 seconds remaining, third down. And 13 yards for the Big Blue. Yeah, this is the big third down. They've had a lot of third and longs. Uh, the Tigers offense by shooting themselves in the foot. Let's see if they can convert on a third and long. There's Roberson, and it looks like he's got warm flag on the play. He scores, but let's see what the call might be. Boy, Robinson got up. Well, it's officially my penalty counter. <laughs> I think that's number eight for the Tigers. They keep shooting themselves in the foot. That is the first third and long that they had success. That's the third string, screen that they've tried to run. They finally pop it, and then they get a holding call from the tight end, number 85, who that's a pancake block, and we don't know what the refs saw there. Uh, that's called putting somebody on their back. <laughs> well, Coach Reed is hollering at somebody. I don't know oh, if it's the that, player or the up. I'm pretty sure he's yelling at the umpire because that's a shaky call at best. Third down, ball on the 34-yard line. And the official is calling timeout. And that's timeout for Mississippi Valley. And, boy, that time Robson picked his way up the field and uh, took it to the end zone and again the big blue bringing it back for miscues yeah that's a tough call i mean the guy had his hands inside of the shoulders he had the guy didn't try to pull away he was clearly dominating the guy put him on his back and he gets bailed out with a holding call uh you know usually that's not how that call works it's usually a guy that's not being dominated that's trying to pull away and the guy is trying to drag him or hold him at that point in time you make that call but that's a tough call for the umpire to make that call and once again the Tigers is a snake bit when it comes to penalties all right that's the seventh penalty of the game for the big blue and I got my counter Howard that's eight or oh, it's eight all right well he's trying to give him a break there <laughs> eight for 60 so that you got a third and five. They, that was a big third down conversion. See what they can do here, Howard. All right, Rosenthal, the big third down with 37 seconds remaining in the half. There's a pass and it's complete to the big back. Corbin, it's gonna be a first down for the big blue with the clock ticking. Well, no, it stops at 29. And the Tigers with the ball on the 29. Misread there as Newbold turned outside. And Rosenthal went up with that pass and misread between the two, but they get a big break. Yeah, uh, some pressure in Rosendahl's face right away. Uh, they had a play action fake there, which nobody's biting on that when you know you're in a passing situation. So that time right there, and they got uh, some pressure up the middle. And uh, fortunately, the Tigers got bailed out with a bad play by uh, one of the defensive tackles for Mississippi Valley. All right, let's see if the Tigers can take it to the end zone as this half is about to end. Upfield, man, wide open, couldn't hold on, and that was Corbin, I think. Yeah, it was that Corbin. That was Corbin, 
And ball throw a little high, but uh, look catchable. Well, that's a running back. He's running 230. Back. He's right. wide open. You can't miss him. Oh, man. <laughs> you can't no. miss him. In his hands. <laughs> so, nevertheless, uh, 14 seconds left. The Tigers have a couple of timeouts. So, last year they really struggled with these type of game situations. Uh, let's see if they can get some points out of here and uh, go into the half with some momentum. Because right now, uh, this game right now is not – um, for the liking for the Tigers. Jerry, Jerry Garner in the game for Mississippi Valley. Watch him because he definitely puts pressure on from that outside linebacker position. Pass down the middle and it's almost picked off as Rosenthal tried to force it in there to Nubo. That's the second time he's attempted to uh, thread the needle, but he didn't have a whole lot of pep on that ball. Well, and he's staring his receivers down. I mean, time he got the ball, he turned right, look right, look right, throw right. I mean, the safety is taught to read the quarterback's eyes. He has to look that safety off if he wants to make that throw. He knows his guy's going to be. He needs to be looking at where the Delta Devil's going to be. Timeout called by Mississippi Valley, and they're trying to keep TSU out of that end zone. That'll give the Tigers a chance to talk about it. Both teams a chance. Uh, not the cleanest ball game, uh, and that's played, not as it relates to penalties or whatever, even though a lot have been called. But it's just um, neither team has been playing great football. But sometimes when you play down to your competition, then it causes problems for you. Well, you know, one of the things you have to look at is that you saw the 31 and a half point favor by the Tigers. And then I myself being an analyst says, well, both of these teams were losing teams last year. I, I don't trust that, <laughs> you know. This team, Mississippi Valley, has 46 new players. They got a, a, a young coach that's cutting his teeth, got into a bad situation. He's trying to change the culture, change the vibe of the program, and he's done a pretty good job so far, right? Uh, the, Delta Deltas are, the Delta Devils are where they want to be in this game. They're keeping it close. They're being physical. They're stopping the run, and the crowd is pretty much – None existing, right? They hadn't had too much to cheer about. So the coach Dancy and his staff has really game playing the Tigers up today. And uh, the big blue Tigers are going to go into halftime and have to figure something out. They definitely are. And you know, as you look at this ball game, Tennessee State has had the possession of the football twice as long as Mississippi Valley. Almost 20 minutes. The Tigers have had possession to Mississippi Valley is 10. And so the, the Tigers have had ample opportunity to put points on the, on the board. Well, I'm trying to figure out, it was 14 seconds a few minutes, a few, few seconds ago, and it hadn't been a play. Was there a play that I missed? Where did the five seconds go? I mean, I saw that the throw to, New, to, to Newbold was 14 seconds. Nevertheless, I mean, they, they, I'm pretty sure they understand what's going on. But I just thought it was 14 seconds a second ago. Well, Corbin missed that pass, but that was a little while back. Oh, Lupo tipped the ball away from the intended receiver and incomplete pass, Big Blue. He had Chris Rowland in the back of the end zone by himself. I'm talking about it wasn't anybody close to I mean, Chris Rowland. I mean, any play call, you got to look for Chris Rowland, especially in this first half. And it just seems like Cameron is just not comfortable, you know, what he's seeing. And he's making bad throws. He's inaccurate. The Tigers are lucky to get out of this first half with just a one-point lead. You see it in the ball game. 31-yard field goal. Bad snap, but he gets it up. And it is good. So you got to give Chris Rowland another bit of credit for holding on to that ball, getting it up and getting it set because that ball rolled back there to him and uh, Zeta had an opportunity to kick the ball. So the Tigers go up by four now and there's going to be a lot of conversation in the dressing room. Yes, yeah, so... Gold Delta Devils right now, they're feeling good. Oh, they got to be feeling good. They got to be feeling good. 
uh, just trailing by four points as Tennessee State University takes a 10 to 6 lead and it's halftime fans as the Tigers lead by four points you're listening to OVC football on ESPN what's going on here We're back at halftime in Nissan Stadium as the Tennessee State University Tigers lead 10 to nothing over the Mississippi Valley Delta Devils. And then the Tennessee State University band is on the field now. Delta Devil band has come off the field. And you know what? When the fans come to games like this, they stay to see the band. Yeah, well, that's part of the, the pageantry of uh, classics is the, the battle of the bands uh, and also the fifth quarter where both bands battle uh, after the game is over with. But nevertheless, let's talk a little bit about football here, Howard. Let's go to the stats and talk about how this first half was just an offensive struggle for both teams. Uh, you look at it, that Mississippi Valley had a total of 43 offensive yards uh, for the whole first half. Uh, basically 16 yards rushing, uh, only an eight attempts. But if you look at what Mississippi Valley wanted to do was stop the run, they held the Tigers to 53 yards on, only on 21 carries. So the Tigers have 180 yards of total offense, but right now both teams are sputtering on the offensive side of the ball. So kudos to both defensive. They got control in this game. Well, I guess Mississippi Valley would also say kudos to penalties because Tennessee State University has definitely outplayed Mississippi Valley, but the penalties have hurt the Tigers, even though there's only 20 yards between difference between both teams, Tennessee State has twice as many penalties. So the penalties that Tennessee State has had that have hurt them the most is the ones on the big plays. And, and that's really kept Mississippi Valley in the game. And this is where it could be so dangerous. Yeah, so, you know, a lot of things go into what our conversations are about 
the actual flow of the game. Now you have to understand that Tennessee State came in as a 31 and a half point favorite in this game. So you, you know, basically they're they're the favorites to win, and the performance they're putting on in the first half is really not conducive of a team that's a 31 and a half point favorite. So you have to give kudos to Coach Dancy and his squad for coming up. To, from, from Mississippi Valley and come and have a great showing and they're one call away from leading at halftime uh, which was the correct call uh, the, the Tennessee State running back didn't have possession of the ball uh, when he when he basically fumbled it and the defender picked it up and ran it in for a touchdown but the only score of the game is uh, another fumble and the same defender who picked up the first one picked up the second one and scored so uh, Mississippi Valley is in this game. Now, their defense is solid. Uh, they have corrected a lot of things that wasn't successful for them last year, which was stopping the run. They was basically last in the SWAC last year, 117th in FCS in run stoppage. Well, they've held t the targets under 100 yards in the first half, so they're well in, in route to a great showing in, in for the first game. Right. And if you look at Tennessee State's side, and you talk about Chris Rowland, Tennessee State has 180 yards total offense. Chris Rowland has 94 yards of that 180 yards. Over half the yards in this ball game so far is all Chris Rowland. And don't, don't forget about the, the shortstop catch he made on a field goal uh, and got it down to get the Tigers a little breathing room so that they can be up by four at halftime. Nevertheless, disappointing first half for the Tigers, to say the least. But you know that's something that TSU can go into the dressing room and fix. Now, what that fix is going to look like, I guess we'll see in just a little while. But he's one of the paychecks are, are, are made, right? Making adjustments during the game. You came into the game with a game plan. Well, that game plan didn't work out too well for you. So you got to go in and make some adjustments and figure out what you need to do to attack the Delta Devils defense because it's stingy right now, and they're controlling the line of scrimmage. Now, you know, Mississippi Valley on the other side, even though uh, the quarterback, Bryant, has played the entire first half, there's another quarterback waiting in the wings, and that's Totten, and that's Willie Totten's nephew. And not to say that Bryant doesn't deserve to keep playing, but... Uh, they did, they have said that they would insert Totten if need be. And a change like that could shake it up as it relates to their ability to move the football because they really have not been able to move the football. Well, both offensive coordinators are, are not comfortable with their quarterback standing in the pocket. Uh, both are starting to roll out their quarterbacks a lot uh, to try to get away from pressures from both defensive lines. Uh, nevertheless, when you're talking about the quarterback situation, Mississippi Valley has a, a transfer quarterback in, Roger Totten, who you just spoke of, but also the Tigers have to do some thinking as well because they have a fifth-year senior on the sideline by the name of Michael Hughes uh, that has shown that he's more uh, than uh, an average quarterback last year. Um, had some phenomenal games last year. And over his career, he has 24 touchdowns and 13 interceptions and a completion percentage way over 60%. So he's a senior. Uh, he's given a lot to the program. And when you got a quarterback struggling like Rosendahl, he's made some good plays and he scored the only touchdown. But he's missing some guys that are wide open. And uh, he's struggling throwing the football and seeing the field. He just doesn't look comfortable. And that could be something just first game jitters. But first game, I mean, how long do you want to try this project? <laughs> you know? I mean, it's the John Mary Classic. You can't lose this. So we'll see what the Tigers do. And let's see what the Delta, the Delta Devils do. Well, some other highlights for Tennessee State University. Caleb Mosley averaging 43.2 yards a punt on five punts. And he's really helped to keep Mississippi Valley uh, on the heels uh, with those huge punts that he has had. So he, along with Chris Rowland, have been real high spots in this ball game. Uh, on the defensive side, again, Killings, Bryant, both have four tackles apiece. Nesbitt, Efting, three tackles apiece. And, you know, the defense has been playing 
decent ball. But um, again, Tennessee State has twice as many yards, more than twice as many yards. Tennessee State has played twice as many minutes, has held the ball twice as many minutes, and the Tigers should be up by many more points. So maybe if they can just pull it off, maybe not having to change the quarterback yet, but if they can just put it all together and put it in the end zone, uh, the Tigers might be able to pull it out uh, very respectful. Fans will be back in a moment. You're listening to OBC Football on ESPN. <laughs> State University leading 10 to 6 over the Mississippi Valley Delta Devils. Tigers were projected to win this game handedly, but Mississippi Valley has played tough. They played tough football. They've actually been outplayed by Tennessee State University offensively, but Mississippi Valley has come up with the big plays that they need, and they have put points on the board when uh, they need it by picking up a fumble and returning it for a touchdown, missing the extra point, and they're in this ball game. And this is the kind of ball game, Derek, where teams have to be careful. Tennessee State has to be careful. They've got to come out here and play football and, and uh, dominate the second half, but turn that domination into points. Yeah, well, you know, kudos to, to Coach Dancy and the Mississippi Valley State Delta Devils, who has taken this opportunity to try to turn their program around. If you look at their schedule, um, now I was talking to their, their SIDs and their people, and they were really excited for playing in the NFL field and said, hey, last year we didn't get a chance to play in a big game like this. And, you know, when opportunities knocks, you just got to open the door, right? And so they saw this as an opportunity. They knew they were heavy underdogs, and they came, they've come in and done what they needed to do to be in this ball game. So they, the Delta Devils are right where they want to be. When you're playing a team that's supposed to be four touchdowns better than you, you just want to keep that game close and take it into the fourth quarter. And uh, that's basically what they're doing. They're not asking a lot from their quarterback, uh, the Jared Bryant. They're not putting him in a lot of bad situations. They're starting to roll him out of the pocket to keep the pressure off of him. You know, throwing to the sideline, high percentage passes, you know, getting the ball out of his hands quick. So that's the game plan. And they're really waiting for the Tigers to make a mistake and make sure they don't make any. All right. Well, Tennessee State has been penalized 15 yards on the kickoff for delay of game as halftime went uh, beyond the allotted time. And um, normally we blame it on the band, but I think it's a possibility that the um, presentation that occurred at the end might have taken us over. But, you know, it's – Sometimes happens when you get two uh, teams from historically black colleges together. The bands are 
a really big attraction and uh, used to be automatic where there would be a penalty at the end of the game. But on a lot of games like classics, they are a little more lax and don't really hold to the 20 minutes. But in this game, they have done that. So Tennessee State starts again from 15 yards back and Mosley will have to come in and kick off uh, and really put his foot into it. Well, Howard, no comment. Let's talk so <laughs> I tried to work through that one. Yeah, no comment. All right. He takes it from the 10. He's open. Wow. He's across midfield, still on his feet. Oh, finally pulled out of bounds. And there's going to be a flag on the end of that one. They're going to call horse collar and hitting after he goes out of bounds. And a great return by Clayton, but that's going to push it up inside the 30-yard line. So just let's, let's just kind of digest this for a second, Howard. We saw one band. We saw two bands. We saw a presentation after the bands that caused the 15-yard penalty. The first play of the second half, we get another penalty. So now that's taking the Tigers to 10 penalties. That's 30 yards of penalties coming out of halftime, out of the locker room. And the ball's on the 25-yard line. There you go. That's how championships are won, Howard. And that's how they lost. <laughs> yeah. All righty. Well, it's going to be first down and 10 for Mississippi Valley in great field position. Bryant, back to pass, and it's complete. And knocked out of bounds is Clayton. Not before he picks up another first down. Yeah, look like Mississippi Valley is going back to Archie Gunslinger Cooley's stack lineup, and the Tigers were not prepared for that because they were outmanned on that play. On the carry. John Derrick Smith, 5'10", 195 pounds, and he bowled his way all the way down to the two-yard line. And it's going to be first and goal. And there he goes again. Caught behind the line of scrimmage this time. No, they're going to say he stopped at the line of scrimmage. It's going to be second down, goal to goal from the two. Well, what the, uh, the, the Mississippi Valley... Uh, Delta Devils have come out with a little tempo. They're spreading the Tigers out from number to, excuse me, from sideline to sideline with the stack formation that's uh, synonymous with Mississippi Valley football. And now they're starting to really get it deep down into Tiger territory and, and looking like they're trying to take the lead. There's Derek back to pass. And he throws it out of bounds. Derek Bryant. And they got to be careful because Brian can run that football, too. Well, that's the thing that uh, the defensive coordinator for Tennessee State, Coach Fisher, talked about. Said he wanted to try to bottle up the Jarek Bryant, that he knew he could throw the ball well, but he really wants to run it. And they pretty much held him in check in the first half. Let's see if the Tigers can make a big stop here and try to get the momentum back coming out of the halftime. Big third down for Mississippi Valley, threatening to score. Pass and it's incomplete. It's caught. Oh, it is caught. Touchdown, Mississippi Valley. I thought the ball had thrown gone over his head, but he pulled it in. And touchdown, Mississippi Valley on the reception. Johnny Wilson and uh, the Delta Devils go ahead. Yes, indeed, the Delta Devils go into halftime, make adjustments, get a couple of gifts from Tennessee State University, and then they throw it to their big 6'4", 6'5", wide receiver from Tylertown, Mississippi, a transfer in from Southwest Community College for the jump ball, and the Delta Devils have taken the lead. Into attempt to four and after, Hayden Schuster. And the gig is good. So with 13.29 remaining in the third quarter, 
The Delta Devils take the lead, 13 to 10. And I'll tell you what, things are just falling in place for the Delta Devils. First touchdown was on a fumble recovery and return. The second one on a tip pass that fell into the arms of the receiver laying on the ground. Those are the type of things that happen in games when you don't take over. And also this situation, starting with a 15-yard penalty and on the kickoff, and then a 15-yard penalty on the tackle. Well, what do you say, Tiger? I mean, what do you say, Howard? I mean, the Tigers will just continue to shoot themselves in the foot. These are the things they did last year that made them a losing team on the season. And it looked like they are starting to copy those same type of threats. And uh, it is what it is. They got to figure it out. They got 22 seniors. They got a veteran coaching staff. This is not a very, very good performance right now for TSU. Well, this Tigers, but it is a good performance by Mississippi Valley. Take nothing away from it, Mississippi Valley. That's right. They're they, playing. They're taking what we're giving them and making the most of it. There's kickoff out of bounds, so that gives Tennessee State good field position as the ball will be marked at the 35-yard line. And Tennessee State will have good field position coming into this third quarter. Right, so we talked about that, right? Tennessee State has one offensive player right now. What's his name? Chris Rowe, okay? Are you going to give him the ball now? Are you going to kick him that ball? <laughs> no. So that's just great coaching by Coach Dancy, okay? We got half of their offense is coming from one guy. Let's take this one guy away. We get a touchdown. We're up now. Just smart coaching, smart football. The other Devils are in the driving seat. All right. First and 10 for the Tigers. Rosenthal still in at quarterback. There's a pass to Roland and... Should have been pass interference there, but it was not called. There was contact prior to the ball being touched by Roland, but the official considered a no call. Well, I mean, right there, the left tackle, Jalen Gupton, is 15 yards down the field. So I don't know if he knows the play. Uh, I think that's coming back anyway. <laughs> if he catches that ball, because he was further down the field than the receiver. So there's some miscommunication here. Rosenthal on the center. And there's a handoff up the middle to DeMarco Corbin. And he bulls his way up to the 40-yard line. Pick up a five yards on the play, third and five for the big blue. Trailing. 13 to 10, early in this third quarter. Robeson on the carry, and he picks up the first down and more. You know what's real clear to me, and to probably to you, is that there's not a lot of movement from the Tigers' offensive line. I mean, it's a stalemate. I mean, Mississippi Valley is stout. Uh, of the defensive line, and it's really, really giving them problems uh, of trying to run the football. And there he goes. Do I need to say his name? Touchdown, Big Blue, as Roland breaks a couple tackles, takes it into the end zone, no flags, and the Tigers go back ahead. Well, how you know what I'm about to do now? You know they give out a trophy at the end of the game for most valuable player. I'm just going to go and start wiping it down and making sure Chris Rowland's name is spelled right <laughs> because he's been the TSU Tigers offense. What a game for the senior out of Nolensville, Tennessee. State champion here in the state of Tennessee, Ravenwood High School. He is putting on a show. 54 yards on that pass play, just breaking two tackles and taking it to the house. Well, both teams have come out and struck, you know, pay dirt. And so you see in both coaches' staff are making adjustments, trying to do little subtle things to get the edge. But one thing's for sure, we got a ball game here in Nashville, Tennessee. We got a ball game. Kick is up. And Zeta is perfect so far on extra points. As the Tigers now lead... By a score of 17-13 with 
with 12 minutes, 24 seconds remaining in this third quarter. Tennessee State University. Dr. K's Exotic Animal ER. New season starts. Seventeen thirteen is the score. Tennessee State University back on top after a 54-yard run and catch by Chris Rowland. And now let's see if the Tigers' defense can hold and see if penalties can subside. A high end over end kickoff that's going to go out of the end zone. So it's going to be first and 10 for the Delta Devils at the 20 yard line. Well, if you're the defensive coordinator for Tennessee State University, you got to be scratching your head. Your, your unit has only given up 68 total yards <laughs> in the game, and, and they have two touchdowns. So uh, you just got to keep them in the game. They're dominating the line of scrimmage. And now you're asking your defense, hey, when you guys are going to score? You know, when you gonna turn the ball over? Right, right. right. When you gonna make a play? So we'll see what the Tigers' defense do. All right, and that ball is at the 25-yard uh, line. I'm old school now. I need to remember that that's a new rule there. That pass is incomplete, as it was intended for Johnny Wilson. Wilson couldn't hold on, the ball thrown behind him. Well, one thing for sure, uh, Johnny Wilson is getting the best of our All-American right now, DeJoy Nesbitt. Um, they're out there one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, he's 6'4", Johnny Wilson is, and uh, DeJoy Nesbitt is six feet. So, you know, there's a size difference there. Looks like it's going to be a replay, I mean, excuse me, a review of that last play. Yeah, DeJoy uh, Bryant threw the ball behind him, but it, it, it did appear that uh, Wilson might have held on to that football. So it will be looked at. And so, you know, I would say just five minutes ago, it looked like Tennessee State was getting ready to implode, just business as usual. Then all of a sudden, we have a big play. Chris Rowland. Chris Rowland. I mean, that's how you can say it. It's Chris Rowland is holding this, this team together right now. We're just refusing to let them lose this game. And, you know, just think about it. All the plays, all the catches, and then even him scooping the ball up and getting it down for the egg for that uh, for the field goal. You know, all those plays have been very pivotal in a tight game like this. So when you got a senior leader like that and he he performs that way, he's pretty much throwing you on his, on his back and saying we're not going to lose this football game and try to will this team to a win. So Chris Rowland has 98 yards receiving. And of course, um, we don't have his return numbers, which is unusual. Uh, but the fact is, we don't have the return numbers on the stat. But uh, his receiving numbers are 98 yards. So he almost has 100 yards in receiving. Yep, so I got his return yards, his punt return yards. He had five punt returns for 49 yards. Of course, the long being the 34 yarder. Uh, so uh, looks like that they're going to overturn that play and give the catch to the Delta right. Devils for a first down. Well, it should sure look like a catch, and uh, I didn't want to second guess the official, but uh, it did look like a catch. So that was a 10 yard play. A 10-yard catch by Johnny Wilson. A great catch by Johnny Wilson. It's going to be first and 10 for the Delta Devils. Bryant's trying to get his band to quiet down. They're to his back. And that's what happens in the second half. The band's play the entire half. A little different in the SWAC. OVC doesn't allow it. But uh, in the SWAC, the bands never stop in the second half. Clayton on the carry. And the Tigers have him bottled up around the line of scrimmage. Kai Brown on 
on the tackle along with the host of Tigers. Yeah, one thing's for sure, somebody else has really been having a good game is the middle linebacker for Tennessee State, Jay Sean Bryan. He's been all over the field and helped assist with that play as well. And he's there again. <laughs> that was a little uh, loop pass to Kevin Lovett. 6'2", 230-pound tight end. And uh, he barreled his way up to the 39-yard line, pick up of two yards on the play. Third down, seven. Yeah, once again, the, the offensive staff of Mississippi Valley keeping DeJeric Bryant in situations where he don't make a big mistake. So they're giving him a lot of rollouts and a lot of quick passes like just as that. And that's a first down for the Delta Devils. <laughs> Gray on the reception for Mississippi Valley and another first down. Ball on the 49 yard line, 10 yards on the play. Yep, that's just good game management by the offensive coordinator and it's also good execution for, from, from Bryant to keep his team on the field with another first down. Overthrown that time as the pass was intended for Gray. On the coverage for Tennessee State, Nick Hopper Jr. Nick Hopper Jr., the son of Nick Hopper Sr., former player for the Tennessee Titans. Yeah, so the offensive coordinator for Mississippi Valley is Jerry Powers. This is his first year on the job. He was the offensive line coach last year, and he's pretty much organized this, this offense where he is a game management situation where they're not trying to beat themselves and make a lot of mistakes, and they're executing that pretty well here tonight. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, Bryant did a great job of getting that ball away because Brown was all over him, and he passed it, and it was complete to Gray for a five-yard pickup, third down, five yards to go. Let's see if the Tiger defense kind of stiffens up and kind of sits on some of these short routes that the uh, Mississippi Valley has been throwing and be having some success on this drive. Well, they came on that last one and Mississippi Valley has made a mistake here as New procedure called, and that's going to push them back in their own territory. Back to the 49. It's going to be third and 10. Yeah, this now this really puts Valley in a strange position where they don't want to be third and long. This really puts a lot of pressure on their quarterback. And let's see what they do here to try to make sure he doesn't make any major mistakes. Another quick pass. Gray still on his feet. Boy, Tigers were bouncing him around but didn't get their hands wrapped around him. And they're going to mark him out of bounds at the 46-yard line in the Tigers hill. Yeah, that was a big stop for the Tigers. It was uh, aided by a legal procedure penalty that put Mississippi Valley in a third and long. They've been really trying to keep it third and manageable uh, under five yards, and that time it got third and 11, and it really made it uncomfortable for them. So uh, good job with the Tigers' defense getting off the well, field. There's Chris Rowland again, and he handles the ball and runs out of bounds at the 10-yard line. And you know, that was a smart play by Roland, you know. Um, it's kind of a knuckleball there uh, for the kicker and had that ball hit, it, it would have stuck, so he handled it. All right, fans, uh, we're going to take a break and we'll be... <laughs> ...university on offense, leading in this ball game, first and 10 from the 10. Flag on the play. After a tough run. That flag was late too, How It was. All 
Unnecessary roughness called against Will James. And he's coming out, Howard. <laughs> he cost the team 15 yards like that inside the 20. Yep, that's uh, that's penalty number 11, Howard. Yep, yep, number 11. And uh, again, after after a tough run like that, because Mississippi Valley is still playing tough. Oh, up front. oh, oh yeah, yeah, no and doubt. They uh, have they have committed to stopping the run, and they've done an excellent job tonight in doing so. This was coming together now. All right, they got it together, so I guess so. Uh, we're ready to go. Well, oh. if, you're, if you're Mississippi Valley, you got to just stop, just stop rolling, right? Just got to yep. stop him and then just take whatever that somebody else does. Pressure's on. Wow. That time, uh, Tennessee State lineman decided not to fight back, and that was our, and that was, of course, Thomas Burton. And the Mississippi Valley player was very aggressive and no call. Well, when you have a history of being a you know undisciplined team, you sometimes you just don't get the benefit of the doubt, right? Um, yep. And, and that's what really bites you. You know, that time that could have been called, and uh, it wasn't. So the Tigers have third and long. Pass is complete, 20 yard line. Tallest man on the field. Yes, and that's a great catch and throw, but once again, Cameron Rosendahl is just eyeing, eyeing where he's throwing the whole time. And you know, I was kind of anticipating about to say that ball's gonna be thrown to, to you know, number 84. And he, got, he has to start looking those guys off. He can't do that the whole year. First down, TSU. There's Robeson on the run. He's got some room. First down and more. And he's finally brought down. Cooper on the uh, stop for Mississippi Valley, but not before Robeson moves the ball to the 38-yard line. 18 yards on the carry. It's going to be first down. Pass there again to, I won't say his name. <laughs> Let me Chris guess. Rowland. Could I guess? <laughs> Chris Rowland. He was wide open on that play. He uh, ran a 10-yard out, and there was a confusion in the secondary for the for the Delta Devils, and he was open pretty much right away. They tried to get some underneath coverage uh, with Jamonte Shaw, uh, but he couldn't do it. And uh, that's another big play for Roland and uh, first down Tigers. 42 yards for Chris Roland as he continues to roll. They say keep it rolling with Roland. Let's pass to Roland again. Still on his feet. And he moves it down inside the 15, down to around the 13 yard line. Man, I don't want to say he's unstoppable, but he's doggone hard to stop. Well, one thing this year, uh, this summer, I saw Chris Rowland uh, around town and he talked about how he was trying to get his body in shape and knew it was his senior campaign and he really wanted to be in top, top, top notch condition and he's showing it tonight. He's phenomenal. All right, ball to 13 yard line. Second down. And there's Robeson trying to keep it rolling. Mark him down at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, you're starting to see the Delta Devils get a little tired. They're trying to substitute players in and out. It seems like the Tiger offensive line is starting to lean on them a little bit. They've been out there a long time. Yes, they have. And uh, they're starting to kind of get kind of wear them out a little bit to see if the Tigers can cash in inside the red zone here on third and four. Okay. 
hand off to Roberson as he moves the ball down to around the 11-yard line. It's going to be fourth and two. Well, well, you know, C Coach Ryan Reed, he has to, he has to know that sometimes you got to roll the dice, and uh, he's going to make a field goal right here. But you're at home as John Mary Classic. Uh, I know you got to make it a, a touchdown score game, so he's probably right here to do this. But you know, the crowd is dead. You know, there's not a lot of going. You know, noise in the stadium. You got to have some stuff here to kind of make it. You know, jump up a little bit. 28-yard field goal attempt. Kick is up. And it's good. So Zeta's two of three tonight. And the Tigers put three more points on the board. 2013 is the score. With four minutes 39 seconds left in this third quarter. You're listening to OBC Football on ESPN. John Mary Classic as Tennessee State University has taken a 20 to 13 lead over Mississippi Valley. And Chris Rowland, I'm going to say it now. You know, he told us at the luncheon that his new name was Mr. Automatic. I wasn't going to give him those props until I saw Mr. Automatic at work. He's Mr. Automatic. Well, he's definitely at work. <laughs> yeah, but he's definitely uh, having a phenomenal, phenomenal game. I mean, you got to think about last year, he didn't play in one game due to injury. He was canceled, uh, two games were canceled. Uh, so he only played in eight games, was in the top 10 in the OVC uh, in receptions and in the country. So, I mean, this is what he does, and he just. He's just a phenomenal ball player, man, that's uh, in the senior campaign and trying to wheel this team to a victory. And, you know, you see him wide open, but don't think they're not trying to cover him. I mean, that's what Coach Reed told us. He just has that knack for getting open. <laughs> and he can get himself wide open. And uh, this is not because nobody's guarding him or nobody's <laughs> defending him. He is doing his job. And uh, he gets himself open and then... Uh, he's he's uh, he's the devil to try to bring down. Yes, well, he's only three catches away for tying a single game record uh, for the Tigers with 13. So there's a lot of time left. He may break it tonight. Yep, Tyrone Butterfield with that record, or he and Butterfield. Whoa, that was almost an interception by TSU. Dominique Williams. Yeah. Almost picked that one off. Yeah, that's the transfer from the University of Kentucky who's been uh, hobbled all camp with a stress fracture. So it's good to see him out there and getting some action. He didn't start this game tonight, but uh, he could be a major factor on the corner for the Tigers if he's healthy. Second down and 10. And Tigers toughening up up front. On the carry, John Derrick Smith, and he's had tough running in this second half. Well, if you're the, the Mississippi Valley, you're not panicking right here. You're not. You're deep in your territory. You've had a game plan to game management. Now put your quarterback in bad situations. It's a punt. It's okay. Uh, if you've score, already scored a non-offensive touchdown today, so, hey, you try to not make the major mistake to bust this game wide open because if they make one, it could be over here if they get a bad play here. Only six points down. And that pass is thrown out of bounds. Intended for Jarius DJ Clayton. He's had a, really, he's been a busy guy all day today. Yep, and you saw there when, when J the Jerry Bryan has to sit in the pocket and throw, he doesn't have a lot of time. And he just took a major hit from uh, the senior Dante Ferguson that was bar barreling down on him. So that's what, you know, that's what Mississippi Valley, it, you know, is faced with. They don't have the type of offense to, to kind of come back, so they have to keep these games close. So I'm surprised they're not running anymore. He yep. was a leading rusher last year on this team, and... That could cause TSU to be a little more careful. Yep, well, the, you know, the defensive line has really controlled the game for the Tigers. So, I mean, it hasn't really been a lot of opportunity for them to run, you know. So, 
you know, the game plan was to keep the game close. Right. Okay. We're, 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 we're three minutes left in the third quarter. It's a touchdown uh, ball game. Uh, you was a 31 and a half point underdog. So, I mean, hey, that Mississippi Valley's right on time. Coach Dancy's right on time with the game plan. And let's see what the next 16 minutes will bring. All right, first down and 10 for the Big Blue. Cam Rosenthal still at quarterback. Settling down a little bit. And there is Mr. Rowland again. Mr. Automatic pick up of two yards on the play. Second and eight. Yeah, he's hobbling off too a little bit. Look like he's coming off a little gimpy. Uh, let's hope for the best and make sure to see if he's not hurt because he's had a phenomenal game when he just went down. So that's not good for the Tiger. Let's hope he's going to be okay there. As he passes the sideline and yeah, that pass. Is that Roberson? No, that's fa that's Fat Cat. Oh. Fat Cat Johnson, the true freshman out of uh, Springfield, that's getting his first action of the game. And uh, he's a so-called mini Roland that they thought it right. would be very similar to how Chris Roland came in as a freshman. So uh, that's good to see him in the game. That's Drayton uh, Johnson out of Springfield. Five yards on the play. Third down and three. He's a speedster. Looks like the Mississippi Valley is going to hold Big Blue. Let's see what Coach Reed's going to do here. Looks like the offense is staying on the field. All righty. So Drayton comes back in the game. He goes back out. <laughs> All right, this is the first fourth down for the Tigers in 2019. Let's see what they have up their sleeve on this fourth and three. All right, fourth down, <coughs> three yards to go. And quarterback's going to punt it. Good move. Good move. As the Tigers will down it at the nine-yard line, that's not so bad. Yeah, well, you know, Cameron uh, can punt the ball a little bit, so, I mean, that's something, that's some film that people have to watch. And next time you're in that situation, they may be looking for punt a little bit, and you may be able to sneak in the fourth down play. So... Nevertheless, the defense is playing well. Put the, the, the Delta Devils back inside of their 10-yard line and make them do something that they're not comfortable doing, which is making a, you know, a, a big play. You know, they want everything quick and get the ball out of the quarterback hand. There's a quick pass again over to Gray. Ball at the 13-yard line. Pick up a four yards. Second and six. Yeah, it's just a matter of time. It seems like one of the Tiger corners are going to jump one of those routes. But never again, you also got to guard against the double move. That's right, because you're out there on the island by yourself. If he catches it and gets by, he's gone. Wow, great effort by the running back for Mississippi Valley. That's John Derrick Smith on the carry. And he, he took a host of Tigers about three or four yards with him. Yeah, he had a little help from his offensive lineman that got, got involved as well. So that's a positive game and another short, third, short, down, short down distance on third down. And handoff and first down. As number 73 opened the way, Zacchaeus Sias, offensive lineman, 6'1", uh, 315 pounds, cleared the way. It's first and 10 for the Delta Devils. 
Well, it looks like that's the last play of the third quarter, and the Delta Devils are going to take it into the fourth quarter. Well, they are, fans, and that's the end of the third quarter with the score of Tennessee State 20, Mississippi Valley 13. You're listening to OBC Football on ESPN. Carhartt, we've got your back 24-7. time that the, the Delta Devils came out so it took a shot play uh, it's kind of not panic time it's only a one score game but they need to get the Tiger defense uh, loosened up a little bit because they've settled in and uh, they got to figure out a way to get some kind of positive plays going if they want to stay into, the, into this football game all right it's second down in 10 and pass is complete and it's going to be a first down on the reception again, Gray, and he's had a big night. That's his seventh reception of the night. Smith on the carry, pick up of one, well, second and nine. Well, the Delta Devils were involved in some very close ball games last season, uh, one of which they won their, their only victory was against Arkansas Pine Bluff. So these type of situations, the Delta Devils are not, not afraid. Uh, this is that kind of how they want to play, keep it close, winning at the end. Well, that was Brian on the carry. They finally uh, had a running play for him, and the Tigers were right there waiting on him. And on the tackle is your guy, Deshaun Bryant. And he made the stop right at the line of scrimmage. Well, you got to recognize Jason Bryan is a true sophomore, and it's, it's his first start at middle linebacker. And uh, he's been having an impact in this ball game, and that's what you want from your, your middle linebacker. Larry Wilhoyd in the game now at safety. And they're going upfield again. Good defensive play by Tennessee State as Dominique Williams played the receiver and then found the ball and um, just a good play. Yep, let's see who's back. Look like Chris Rowland kind of hobbled off the field and looks like that's the true freshman uh, back there from Springfield, Fat Cat Johnson, getting his first opportunity to, to be a uh, touch the ball on the punt return. He was known as a phenomenal punt returner in high school, so let's look and see exactly what he had to do with his first shot. It looked like the Tigers had too many players on the field. Roland's coming on the field. I think he's just coming. Tennessee State's calling timeout. Roland came on the field to talk to Johnson and uh, so the smartly called timeout. So let's, let's look at some uh, third, quor through, or third quarter stats. Uh, the Tigers now have 338 yards of total offense. Uh, well, and Mississippi Valley, you know, cracked the century mark uh, with a, several good drives and a touchdown drive straight out of home, I mean, excuse me, halftime. They gave them the lead, the lead briefly. So the game kind of sped up in the third quarter, but this game is going to be won in the fourth quarter. So. Uh, let's see which team has has the stamina. You know, you got to have stamina in the fourth quarter and uh, see if the summer work is going to be uh, something that's going to get them over the top. And it looks like Chris Rowland is back deep. Wow. So uh, he's shaking off that injury, and uh, he's back in the game. He's a tough guy. Yeah, if, if, if you're the special team coach, you have to say, we're going to do a return for Rose, right? We're not going to go after this ball. We're going to block up good and give him a, a, a little space. You well, they're actually, going to, they're actually called time out to talk about it. And so we'll be back in a moment. You're listening to TSU Football on ESPN. Uh, 
All right, fans, looks like we're gonna stay here with you and uh, we're glad we are because Mississippi Valley is back on the field. Hayden Schuster is the punter. The dangerous Chris Rowland is back to receive at the 25 yard line. And it looks like the Tigers might have a block on. And if they do, Chris Rowland would be calling for a fair catch, I'm sure. They don't have return on. And there he goes. The injured Chris Rowland runs out of bounds. <laughs> Didn't look too injured to me. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> but he did get out of bounds. He's in top shape, you know. He talked about getting his body uh, ready for a senior season. And, uh, I mean, tonight, you know, he's had a phenomenal game, and he still has, what, 13 minutes left. He's three catches away from tying the, the uh, single-game record for Tennessee State. Uh, that, that record is held by uh, several guys that have done that feat before. Uh, but Tyrone Butterfield. Tyrone Butterfield, Chris Rowland, who actually holds that mark at 13, so he can break his own record or tie it. And there's Nubo. And Nubo, oh, horse collar almost. It appears that uh, he stayed on his feet, so they didn't they didn't call it, but it was close as uh, Jaminta Shaw had had hold of his back of his jersey, but he let it go. Well, we hadn't got a chance to call Jaminta Shaw's name much. He is the big time cornerback for the Delta Devils, and. Uh, I mean, he's been covering New Bowl the whole game, but of course it's been the Rolling Show, so we had not had a chance to call him yet. You know, Roberson's picking up yards also on the ground. He had 62 prior to that run. Second and two. And there's Johnson, and that pass kind of turned him around, couldn't get squared back up to get uphill. Yeah, once again, look like the Tigers are now going with some tempo uh, to try to, they know if they can get one more, one more score, it's going to be difficult for the Delta Devils to, to come back from that. So they're really trying to put the foot, their foot on the gas to kind of seal this deal. Uh, but let's see what they can do on third and three. After that carry, Roberson, 14 attempts, 70 yards. So he's having a good game. There's the big cat, and he has picked up the first down for the big blue down to the 30-yard line. Of course, it's Harrison. 6'1", 230. He's a load. Yeah, if I'm Mississippi Valley on defense, they kept that same formation. I think something is up. I'm trying to <laughs> watch out for the shot here because I think there's some play there action going on. There it is. <laughs> But the rush is on, and he's got one wide open. <coughs> Miles Cabot on the reception. Oh, you say it was out of bounds? Yeah, so okay. We got a defender from Mississippi Valley, like cramping up. That's their, their, their all-star linebacker, Ladarius Davis out of Memphis, Tennessee. Look like he's excuse me, to Darius Davis that looked like he's cramping up a little bit, and let's hope he's okay. Uh, we hadn't had a chance to talk about him much tonight as well as, uh, you know, the Tigers have really relied on one player, and that's been Chris Rowland. Uh, looks like to Darius has had six tackles so far tonight, and the leading tackler for the Delta Devils is Tracy Tompkins uh, with nine, so uh, it's good to see him walk off the field. Look like he's going to be okay. Uh, that Delta Devils defense has been on the field the majority of the game. Well, Davis had 101 tackles last year. That was a record for uh, Mississippi Valley, and he was number two in the SWAC in tackles last year. So he has the ability. They just showed the uh, bobble catch, and got out of bounds before he could pull it in. All right, it's gonna be second down, 10 yards to go. 
Rosenthal under center. Now he's moving back. Shotgun formation. Good defense by Valley. On the tackle, Jementa Shaw, along with Jalen Bell. They've got a Jalen Bell, too. Yeah, well, one thing's for sure, the, the Delta Devils defense has just played lights out tonight. You gotta give them kudos. They've been uh, something special tonight. That pass was intended for Roland. And he was double, almost triple covered, and still got his hands on the ball. Yeah, that's Cameron not taking what the defense gives him. He had two guys underneath for an easy first down. He decided to go for uh, the touchdown with Chris Rowland and threw an inaccurate pass. So, uh, man, this game is not over with. No, it's not. And no. Zeta is going to attempt a, it's going to look like a 44-yard field goal. He has the distance. He's missed one tonight. He's two of three. Kick is up. And it's good. So, I don't know. Mr. Automatic was holding the ball, but Zeta, we might have to share that name. Yep, because uh, he's turning into Mr. Automatic. Yeah, those are a big three points. That takes a little pressure off uh, the Tigers, but once again, this is not over. So, all right, 23-13 is the score. Tennessee State leading. You're listening to OVC football. Sorry. <laughs> 10 minutes, 47 seconds of the John Mary Classic. The Tigers have gone up by 10 points against a tough Mississippi Valley defense. And Zeta with a long field goal. And it's put the Tigers up by 10, giving them a little breathing room, but it's still a lot of football left to play. Yes, it is. I mean, like I was saying earlier, the Delta Devils have been in a lot of close games, and they were unfortunate on a couple of those last year, and they won. The only game they won, it was in overtime. And so next thing you know, if, uh, you know, this is what they do. They try to make it a, a dog fight, and they try to win it towards the end of the game. So, I mean, it's 10 minutes left, still plenty of time for the Delta Devils to get points on the board. Their defense to get a little breathing room or a little rest. They've been out there all game. Uh, maybe the offense can sustain a five minute, six minute drive to give them a little break and uh, see if they can get some points on the board. All right, well, we'll see. It's first and 10 for Mississippi Valley after the fair catch on the kickoff. As pass is incomplete, good defense by TSU's Dominique Williams. Good hit as Johnny Wilson couldn't hold on. Yeah, he's been the go-to receiver uh, for um, DeJerick Bryant has been Johnny Wilson. He has the only touchdown catch of the game for the uh, Delta Devils, so uh, he's a big target. And so he's pretty sure he's gonna keep looking for him and see if they could lift the top of the Tigers defense. Second down. Again. Good defense. By Williams. Going against a taller receiver. And of course, it's Johnny Wilson, 6'4", 218 pounds. Here's third and long, and this is a uh, uh, down and distance that's not very comfortable for Mississippi Valley. So let's see what they bring here. I was, I'm the Tigers. I'm looking for something quick, and I'm looking for something quick, and there it is. It was something quick. There it is. That's something <laughs> quick, and it's a first down on the reception. The ever dependable set being great. Yeah, that's, that's disappointing for your senior DB to give up that play. He has to recognize what they've been doing now. Uh, 
um, and, and know that it's going to be quick and, and play and, and kind of stop that route from happening. But well, that's a first down for Mississippi Valley. And another completion for the Delta Devils, Vandrew Wright. We haven't, White, we haven't heard a lot from him, but he's 6'3", 235. And another first down, quick snap, and a bad snap, but there's a flag on the play. And it's going to go against the Delta Devils. Valley's almost moving a little too fast for themselves. Yeah, they're getting a little rhythm here. And like I said, there's plenty of time left. And they had two first downs, which first downs have been hard to come by for the Delta Devils. So uh, sometimes you get a little happy and make a mistake. Well, the pass game has been clicking. Last few passes. Brian Beck pass. Another first down. And still on his feet is Gray. Ball down to the 48 yard line. First down, second down, I'm sorry. Second and eight. Line back pass and he's gonna run it. Well, he might be across. Oh, he's definitely across. All right. No, he, he might have. Oh, <laughs> man. Ooh, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting right here on the 50, and that plays on the 48. And he looked like he was across. <laughs> yeah, they might I might have had a bad angle, but <laughs> I've got some head nodding here in the booth that he was across. But nevertheless, it's third down they and might, long. They might not there. They're going to show it now. They're going <laughs> to show it. Oh, he was nah, back. He was yeah, 49. Yeah, yeah, he 49. was fine. He was fine. <laughs> yeah. All right, third down, eight yards to go. Brian back fast, and there's Brown on the rush. Oh, oh be a face, man. Yep. Yeah. But, big play, they might just go on and take the play on that one. They might add this to the end of the play. John Derrick Smith. Oh, man. So John Derrick Smith picks up the big first down, then they'll tack 15 yards on it. And that wow. wasn't Brown, that was Epting on the face mask penalty. Yeah, I mean, that's a tough one. That's a tough one for the Tigers. I mean, he didn't really grasp it. His hand went across it, but he didn't grasp it. Well, what is that, How did you? Yeah, when you when you put it in the face, they, they, they kind of protect you on that one. Well, nevertheless, this is the best drive of the Delta Devils all game long, uh, in striking distance. Ball on the 18. Brian back to pass and almost picked off again. Dominique Williams doing an outstanding job on coverage. Yeah, he was uh, man to man with the tight end, and man, he has to catch that. That 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 wins the game right yeah, there. Yeah, it does. Yes, it does. All right, second down. 10 yards to go, ball in the 19. And the Delta Devils threatening to score in great field position. It's Brian again, and pass is complete. And again, you know, um, Derek, it's, it's hard to tell from up here, but these wide receivers are 6'2". They're not any, any small guys, they're big guys. And uh, it's hard to cover when you're 5'11 or shorter. Well, I mean, it, those are yeah. quick passes. I That's mean, those, right. those corners are just bailing out way too quick, way too soft coverage, especially when you know exactly what they're wanting to do, uh, which is get it out of his hand. That's a fumble, and he got it back. What's a lucky play. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Good hit for the Tigers. And he might have got a first down. Is that a first down, Howard? Or is that fourth? It's close. Dante Ferguson on the stop. Along with Alan.
Jalen Daniels, and they're going to call it about a yard short. Coach doesn't have a choice on that one. Well, well, he does. Well, he does. If he, if he has any faith in yeah, his field goal yeah. kicker, he has to kick it right here, right? Well, he's not. Well, he's going to try to pull us off. And they call timeout. Wow. Yeah, that was a that, – that's right. Well, the Tigers had that one all covered, but uh, – That's why Coach Dancy gets paid the big bucks. He saw something right. that wasn't right and, and saved that play with a timeout. He did. Boy, it's turned into a football game here. The first half was a little dull, but uh, the second half is a game with the score. Tigers 23, Delta Devils 13. We'll be back in a moment. Edie is manageable. Learn more. Fourth down and one, and it looks like Mississippi Valley is going for it. Brian at quarterback. And there he goes, and it's touchdown, Delta Devils. We've been wondering when they were going to use his legs. They used it on that play. Yeah, but that's a great time to call his number. I mean, the t they had the one running back or one back in the backfield, which is the quarterback. So it's hard to believe that the Tigers don't understand that they only have one runner that's eligible back there. So, I mean, that's, uh, that's just a, a play that you just shake your head at, like, wow, what, what, what was going on there? But nevertheless, the Delta Devils have made this a one-score game and could possibly make it a field goal game uh, with this extra point. And once again, the Delta Devils are out here Living their best life. <laughs> Living their best life. <laughs> well, one thing that's going on from my old offensive lineman, uh, they blocked. And the Tigers just got out blocked on that one. The kick is up, and it's good. So we've got a three-point game with 7-16 remaining, and the Mississippi Valley is still in the fight. Yeah, but well, they're more than the fight. Uh, they got a good chance. Uh, they, they need one stop. One stop. Um, they, we talked about giving the defense, their defense, uh, a break. Uh, that was a four-minute drive, basically three. Man, that was a couple of stoppage in plays. They gave them a little bit more time so they can get a little rest and come back on the field and try to get the ball back for the offense. The offense, it seems like they found something against the TSU Tigers. The Tigers were extremely bland on that drive, just giving up five yards, five yards, ten yards on just soft coverage. So, uh, I don't know. Well, I'll tell you what has changed, and that's time of possession. Tennessee State, almost 29 minutes. Mississippi Valley, close to 24 minutes. So where it was that the Tigers had the ball twice as long, that's changed in the second half. Yeah, well, you got to give kudos to, to the uh, Valley's coaching staff. They went into halftime and came out with a game plan, and they've executed well. They scored two touchdowns uh, in the second half. And so that's the difference in the game. They have they, they have two offensive touchdowns, and we have one. So, you know, check goes to the Valley coaching staff in the second half. They've out game playing the Tigers. All right. Well, here we go. It's another short kick, and uh, fair catch was called. And so the Tigers will start. As a result of the fair catch, Looks like the official doesn't know where to put the ball. He's going to figure it out. Oh, he just needs to get rid of that ball. The ball's going to play will start from the 25-yard line. At first, I was wondering if he if uh, he thought it should go at the 35. All right, the Tigers with 7-16 remaining in this game have to continue to put that offense together. Pass to the big tight end as he picks up first down for the big blue. And that's Phillip Brown, 6'2", 240. 
Yeah, that's the first time we called his name. He's a graduate transfer from Alabama State, and it's a, and it's a, a pretty good tight end that they really wanted to get into the game plan, but this game just not ha has not had any type of flow. So, oh, that's a target. That's a target. Uh, and they, didn't call they it. did not call it. The Tigers are asking for a flag there. You can't do that any longer. They say he started his slide on the 39, so. Yeah, once he starts his slide, you can't just dive in spirit. Uh, that's amazing that that wasn't called. Two yards on the play. Here they come. And he's going to keep it again. Now he throws it. And there is, what's his name? <laughs> boy, oh boy. I just, you know, I'm sure the people that are, that are looking at the ball game are already saying his last name, Roland as Roland has taken that ball down to the 36-yard line, pick up of 25 yards and the first down for the Big Blue. Well, this is a big drive. They need to run clock and score. Oh, he slipped down. <laughs> yep. That's unfortunate. That legs got tangled up with the defender. It looks like he might have uh, fallen on his shoulder on that one. That was Brown on the uh, the intended receiver, and he's come off the field. Well, they got the speech during the game now. Darren Johnson, three wide outs to the short side of the field. Oh, flag on the play. Wow, wow. I mean, as a receiver, you just cannot do that. You just can't do that. You just, ca I mean, those, those are mental mistakes that just kill drives. I mean, you're a receiver, you're looking at the ball, you really can't hear the, re the, the quarterback with, with the, I mean, you're looking at the ball, so, <laughs> you know, you can't fall start right there. I mean, that, that really kills the drive. All right, ball goes back 15 yards. There's Robeson on the carry, and he gets the ball back to the line of scrimmage and or to the original line of scrimmage and more as the ball is down at the 35-yard line. And the Tigers are looking at a third and nine. Yeah, this is the play. This is a, a big play right here. Uh, they really need to keep this drive going to keep the clock running, and they need points. So let's see what they come up with. Oh, that is, that's that should have been pass interference. That's a catch. But it was called, it should have been pass interference, and that's amazing that's not called. Oh, wow. Wow. Now, when you land on top of the defender, it looked like the defender was out of bounds as well. Oh, but okay. I'm more concerned about the contact. I mean, he's a two-hand push uh, the, the TSU receiver. Well, he never saw the ball. Wow. Yeah, he never saw the, the ball. The, his foot came down in bounds. They're going to have to take a look at that one. His foot came down. Yep, they're going to have to look at it. I mean, I'm, I, I understand the push, but it appeared that his foot came down in bounds first. It only takes one foot. Right. Right. Of course, you know that you're a receiver, right? <laughs> yeah, I played a little Big bit. Big blue receiver, right? Yes, oh, yes. All right. <laughs> okay. All right. But, you, but you, if you're a Tiger fan, you got to look and say, hey, man, we got 13 penalties, you know. We've had some close ones. That 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 that, uh, that face mask penalty on the last drive was pivotal. And then you see that. I mean, you see a guy that doesn't even know where the ball is and just plays through the defender and, the, and the, it doesn't get called. I mean, that's a game-changing game. Changing game. Uh, game could be a game-changing play. Could be. And so, you know, you got to call that. You got to call that. He didn't know where the ball was. 13 penalties. And his foot is down. In. Yeah, and his foot is in. 13 penalties and 110 yards for the Big Blue Tigers. And assume he has possession, which it appears he has possession. That will be a big play for the Tigers because the momentum is really on the side of Mississippi Valley. Oh, yeah. And oh. this could actually be a momentum killer. 
And you know, for the Tigers, you know, on fourth down, they've been very, very conservative. So that play is not called a uh, completed catch. It's fourth and nine. And you don't know what Coach Reed would do there. He may try a field goal or something like that. So <laughs> you want this to be called a reception uh, because you keep that decision to being for being made. Now, you know something? <clears throat> Last year, I remember this. You were bothered that they weren't using Abdul Haag enough. Oh. Hag enough. Oh. And it's a catch. It is a catch. But you were bothered that they had a guy that was 6'6", 185 pounds, a tough guy that used to play safety uh, in, 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 in uh, junior college, and they weren't going to him. They've been going to him this game. With Abdul Haq, I call him Slim. Ah. He's, uh, he's a guy that should get more opportunities, and, and look what we have here. We got five that comes in and five that comes out. We got too many players on the field. Uh, look like they're trying to go to a big boy package last minute. But where's the play clock? Is at 13 now, so they look like they're going to be all right with with the play clock. And the clock is also running, so that's good for the Tigers. So let's look and see if they can get this ball snap. Oh, it's going to be oh, it's goodness gracious of life. Oh boy! Wow, penalty number. 14. 14, delay game, 115 yards. My goodness. And then we bring the same package back in that you just, I mean, you, I mean, those are the things that just, just, just kill drives. They just kill momentum. And I, I think we got too many players on the field right now. Okay, they recognize that. All right, a first down and goal from the 12-yard line. How with this ball is going up top. Wow. Great defensive tackle by Keontae Daniels, defensive back out of Mississippi. Now, you know this town. I can't pronounce it. Noxapertur or whatever. Nox yeah, I'm going to leave it alone. N-O-X. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the gentleman. Noxapater. Yeah, Noxapater. I, you know what? He's from Mississippi. <laughs> he's from East uh, Central Community College. Right, right, there, there you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah. But he's he already scored a defensive touchdown tonight. He's been phenomenal for the Delta. I'm only supposed to know names and not, not names of towns. Great pass to number one, Steve Newbold. He held on to it. That was a tough catch, but also a great tackle. Yeah, if uh, one against one, Tracy Tompkins, and he's had a big game. Yep, if uh, Cameron can get his head around and get his shoulder turned around a little quicker, he had he had rolling in the back of the end zone for a touchdown if he throws to the back pylon. Again. Nevertheless, he really struggles going to his left. He can't get his shoulder turned around and be accurate with that throw or make the throw. So let's see what they have here on fourth down. Oh, excuse me, third down. All righty. There's a pass. He's out of bounds. Uh, that, that looked like a. That looked. That looked good. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna leave it alone, Howard. You good at that stuff? Yeah, I can't yeah, see that ball. <laughs> he caught the ball. He, he tried to it. drag his he feet. He caught it. He caught it. He was. He was in bounds. The ball took a little while to get to him. By then, he had slid out. Now let's see if I'm right. There it goes. Uh oh. Yeah, on the white. On the white line. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. He might have to look uh, at it. Coach <laughs> Reed is asking him to look at it. Coach uh, uh, Reed's asking him. I know one thing. This field judge over here on this left side has struggled all yes, he night. Has. He has struggled. I don't know what's going on, but but he's struggling over here. Let's see what they're going to do. They'll take a timeout. Yeah, that's that's worth taking the timeout for because that, that wins the ball game for you. Uh, I mean, that is, I mean, I, when I saw that right at, at live time, I thought it was good. You th you thought it was what you thought, I it thought was out. It was out so uh, I, you've been doing this 30 plus years, so <laughs> I, I'm gonna but, always. But, but you gotta remember, my eyes are getting worse every year. So <laughs> yeah, 
They're trying to show it in slow mo, but right, yeah. it looked like they got a bad angle though. That's yeah. really a bad time to have a bad angle. Yeah. Let's see here. All right. There it is. Ah. See that foot is dragging. Yeah. That foot is dragging, and you see the mark on the field. Now that's going to be up to the to the referee. Is if that foot's dragging, time the ball touches his hand. Well, here's the other side of it. If it's not a catch, it's a possibility they might need that timeout later on. Well, this is this is us me now. All right. If this is not a catch, then the Tigers need to go for it. I, I just can't chance it with Valley uh, because they have had them a be last year. Okay. Uh, you know they had games against I believe Arkansas Pine Bluff. Uh, Gramlin State that was just like this. And uh, they was on the wrong side of, you know, the victory. <laughs> so it, uh, it's going to eventually catch up. This team is too good. They played too well. I want to put them out of their misery right here. And I wanted them to go 91 yards against my defense, okay. which has been the best, best unit on the field. All right. So Makes sense. Because that kickoff with only six points down. Yep, they what the, the ruling stands. Okay. So they didn't have enough evidence. That's a tough All call. Right. That's a tough call. And, and they're going to punt it. I mean, excuse me, they're going to kick a field goal. Yeah, and that's rolling the dice, man. Letting the, I, I truly believe if you go for it and they get inside the 30, they'll kick a field goal and tie it. All right, but first thing he's got to make it. Yeah, but now well, everything they do is going to be a touchdown, right? Yeah, like going for a yep. touchdown to win the game. There's nothing you can do about it. So I mean, this is tough. 25-yard attempt, high snap. You got to give it to Mr. Rowland again. That's the second one he's had to handle. A difficult snap, and he got it down. So. Mississippi Valley should be excited right now. Six points down, three minutes, ten seconds. We got a football game. Yeah, but see, this is now everything Mississippi Valley does is touchdown orient, oriented, right? If you go there, and then this is just my conventional thinking. I mean, it goes, probably goes against the odds and the numbers yeah. and things of that nature. But if... if if you go for it and don't get it, when they get inside the 30-yard line, they're going to try to take some shots, but they're also going to be trying to make sure they what? Get three points. Yep. Okay. Yep. So now everything is touchdown-oriented for Mississippi Valley, and this is very dangerous for the Tigers now uh, because that last drive was pretty impressive, the best drive of the, of, the, of the game. And their pass game is starting to click. Yep. Yep. So here you go. Here you go. Three minutes. Uh, Valley has two timeouts. Look like they have two timeouts. Yep, two timeouts. All righty, fans. Well, this is uh, Mississippi Valley's opportunity with three minutes, ten seconds remaining in this ball game, trailing by six points. And they have passed for 152 yards on the night. And they will start from the 25-yard line, first and 10. And we'll see if the Tennessee State University defense can hold. <coughs> well, so far, the Tigers' defense has been the shining, uh, shining light for the team, along with Seth Rowland. Uh, so now they got to try to end the show, or close the show, as they say. And, and, and capture the victory because uh, this game has, I mean, 31 and a half point favorite. And three minutes left, they could they quite possibly lose this game. This is Mississippi Valley has been an awesome opponent tonight. All right, Brian, the quarterback. Back there with him is John Derrick Smith. Smith on the carry. And the Tigers stack him up right at the line of scrimmage. A host of Tigers on the stop. 
Yeah, that's big Raymond Horton blowing up the guard and the tackle. <laughs> I mean, he's he's a, a load in there about 325, and he wasn't having any of that. And Emmanuel Olinga was in there too. Brian back to pass. He's going to run it. Now he's going to throw it. And whoa. Tough drop, John Derrick Smith couldn't hold on to it, but that's what Brian's legs can do. It, <coughs> yeah, it well, can, it can create some uh, opportunities. Third down and nine. Huge defensive, a uh, huge play for both the defense and offense. 232 remaining. Tigers digging in. Brian back to pass, and he throws it. Wow. He's telling his receiver that, he, that was an out, and he cut in. What did he do? Huh? If I'm the Delta Devils, I got to punt got, this. This is the game right here. They got two timeouts, and the defense has also scored a touchdown tonight. So I don't know. It looks like he's letting the clock run down. Yep, does. But clock is. It looks like he's going to call the time up. No, they can't run the play. They're going. They're going. All right, fourth down and nine. Bryant, back to pass. He's got time. Now they're coming. They're coming. And he's still on his feet. And it's complete. First down. Pass complete to number 23, John Derrick Smith. And he didn't drop that one. Well, the improvised game is in full effect. 15 yards on the play, first down. Yeah, that's the, that's the young. And there's another catch in the first down. Gray on the reception. Wow. That's actually not Gray. Yeah, he landed on the ball with a fantastic yeah. catch. Um, that looks like number eight. That yep. is uh, DJ, Clayton. DJ Clayton. Yep. Another Juco out of East Mississippi Community College. And, and this is what I was talking about, how this is a scenario is just unraveling before our very eyes. It's very familiar to the UT Martin game last year, you know? And uh, UT Martin had that opportunity late, and uh, we was able to pull that game out. All right, clock ticks down under two minutes, first and 10 at the Tiger 40. Brian back to pass, and he throws it out of bounds. Looked like his tight end was open, but uh, he chose to uh, not uh, attempt to throw it to Lewis, but uh, tossed it out of bounds to live to fight for another down. Second down. 10 yards to go. A minute 48 seconds left in this ball game. Six points down are the Delta Devils. Brian, back to pass. Got a receiver. Out of bounds. On the defense for Tennessee State was Dominique Williams. And probably could have left him alone on that one. He came down out of bounds, but the official was fair on that one. Not to say they haven't been fair. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 They've yeah. done it. They've done it well. Uh, yes. It's hard to mess up a replay now. So. All right. There's your play. There's your Mississippi Valley special. Wide outs to either side. Here's a rush. They're coming. Brian has a man in the middle, and again, pass complete to John Derrick Smith. First down. Ball in the 29. 16, ball on the 29-yard line, 127 remaining. 
Brian again, out of bounds. Yeah, what's going on now is the emperor, the emperor, the, uh, the, the quarterback, the Jerick, the Jerick Bryan is starting to show his elusiveness. He is elusive, and and they can't get pressure. And, and the Tigers are holding their hands on the hips right now. Yep, they can't get to him, and uh, he's he's doing the, the smart thing by looking at uh, the check down. And uh, the, right now, the Delta Devils are in business. They are. And the pressure's on the big blue. Bryant, back to pass. And he's got his receiver outside, knocked out of bounds, just short of the 20 yard line. Again, Smith on the reception. Big third down play again for both teams. as Bryant gets the call from the sideline. Tigers dig in defensively. Here comes a rush. As a pass, it's incomplete. Wow, and he was wide, oh, wide. Oh my goodness. I don't know what coverage that was, but man, I mean, the Jordan Nesbitt has to understand down in distance. His guy is just right there hooked up by the by the first down marker and he's still dropping into the end zone. Wow, he got away with that one. Epting was putting the pressure and really barreling down on Brian. Brian felt him coming, but thank goodness for Epting's pressure, which probably to rush Brian, keep that pass from uh, from hitting the hands of his intended receiver. So here we are. Another fourth down situation. Tennessee State University. And Mississippi Valley, both in the huddles. It's come down to this. One minute, 11 seconds remaining in this ball game. And I'm sure Valley's coach is over there telling them you can do this. Well, that goes back to my thought process. If if they go for that field goal right now, Valley will be in the decision where they have to kick a field goal to tie it or go for it. Now everything's a touchdown. Okay. This, is, this, is, this is it. We're standing All by the side. Right. This is it. Fourth down. Of course, they can get a first down, too. So this is not. It doesn't have to go to the end zone. There's Bryant. He's got an outside. And oh. it's incomplete. He was wide open again. He was. Oh my God. Brian, Brian, Brian does not need to fuss at his receiver. No. That was a bad pass. Yes. He played a tough game and, and he's done well, but that wasn't the receiver's fault on that one. Oh, uh, that was twice that, that Brian had to roll to his left side. And the last two pass were probably his two worst pass of the game of the game. And they needed it because he had two open receivers there that could have possibly quite possibly gotten the first down. He was telling White, you should have kept kept going, but that was just not, that was, that was a bad pass. He, you know, tough situation, tough situation. All right, Tennessee State's not out of the woods yet. A minute and seven seconds remaining in this game. I guess they could be out of the woods. Well, they should uh, they be out of the knees woods. Down <laughs> and, and, uh, <laughs> they should be yeah, out of the woods. They need to drop a knee and, and, right. and, 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 and maybe put the hands together afterwards. All righty. Well, you got to give it up to That's the Mississippi knee. Valley Delta Devils. Um, they came up, didn't have really a chance. Nobody gave them a chance. 31 and a half point underdogs. All my buddies from Mississippi said Mississippi Valley was going to be a tough opponent. They showed that tonight. And kudos to Coach Dancy and his crew uh, bringing back Willie Sally Satellite Titan as the assistant head coach and quarterbacks coach. And this is a well-coached football program that's on the way up in year two with Coach Dancy. And, uh, you know, we want to commend them. Yeah. They, they, was yes. a, they made it a game. And uh, in a lot of respects, they probably should have won. They probably were a better team. Less penalties. Uh, they played a more disciplined game. All right. Well, fans, that's it. As the clock rolls down, Tennessee State is going to 
I'll be honest. Um, I just got a text from a fan, and he said, that, that was with exclamation mark. And uh, that's what the Tigers need to say after this one, a big woo as uh, Coach Reed comes onto the field. And uh, you know it's a football game. It was a test. It was a test for both teams. As time has run out, fans, and the Tennessee State Tigers have won. John Merritt Classic, number 21, over Mississippi Valley by a score of 26 to 20. And both teams should be proud of themselves. Fan, we'll be back with post-game comments after this message. You're listening to Ohio Valley Football. What's better than having fast, reliable Wi-Fi with coverage throughout your home? How about having internet that can help you save on your wireless bill? Xfinity gives you the most reliable internet for all your devices and the fastest speeds from America's best internet provider so you can easily stream all your favorite movies and TV shows. Plus, save hundreds of dollars a year when you get Xfinity internet and mobile together. Now that's simple, easy, awesome. Click, call, or visit a store today. Rookie. 